they broadcast this area I'm not supposed podcast. to walk through? This week brought to you by 23andMe, Dollar Shave Club, and Ring. You guys got it cluttered with shit. I can't walk through the area that I'm not supposed to walk through. I'm Gus. Yeah, I know there's a sign. I don't like the sign. It's I'm, between me and my office. I'm Blaine. Blah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also Blaine. And Gus. So, uh... <laughs> We had the the War on Christmas extravaganza happen last Thursday. I, look, look at I, I got a little souvenir. Here I was trying not the, to talk about that. Oh, really? What's going on with that? That's terrible. No, it's, I no, kept it's it good. from the from the podcast or from the sketch show. I like yeah, it. Yeah, why? So I was in the first. I'm not wearing the same outfit I wore. I was in the first Ooh, good point. sketch of the show, and I was no, in the weren't. last sketch. Hi, who's there? <laughs> He's on. Hey, what's up? How you doing? Hey, brother. But hey, brother. <laughs> how you doing? The uh, but uh. The, not to spoil it for anybody who hasn't seen it yet, but you're too late. Uh, we brought back some classic characters. The vaguely northeastern New England cops. I don't even know what accent we use for that. But uh, we brought that back. So between the first sketch and I had about, it, it was a fast show. It's like 20 minutes between those two sketches. I went in really quickly and shaved myself this, uh, this, this mustache. So wow. Come out and you, look, like, you look like a character from Red Dead. Do I? I feel like I look like the character from Walking Dead. It's the, funny because the uh, in between that first sketch and the last sketch, I also shaved myself. What's that? You did? Oh. <laughs> Everyone just staring. Barbara did something horrifying right before we started. <laughs> I I had Demonstrate. nothing to do. Is the lighting different, guys? I mean, I hate to I hate to have a technical. There's like a, yeah look at the, yeah we're doing like cool holiday yeah. stuff. I feel like we all have yeah. a set's different shadows too. on our necks. Oh no, he was talking about Am something crazy? else. Or was it? I mean, that whatever you did before, right. what? Barbara. Here, show Barbara. Demonstrate the horribly disgusting thing. She has a Twix bar. For no, those put of it you. side profile. Uh, Get close up in on that. <sighs> it is a baby poop. All right, I will see you there, Brazzers. <laughs> Barb. Oh God. oh God, no, no. All right, we, we need to uh, cleanse our mental palate. We have a special guest joining us here in a second. Uh, that'll help you get past that. But for those of you listening to the okay. podcast, right. there's no reason to go watch that on video. You can just uh, listen to my description. Barb is taking a party size Twix, a miniature Twix. Oh, it's a party. And like sucking it in and out of her mouth, and it looks fucking disgusting. It's like a turd that can't make up its mind. That's right. It's like the groundhog look, seeing its shadow going back in, then immediately coming back Fairy out, and seeing its shadow it. going back in. Yeah. He's dancing or something. My favorite way to eat. <laughs> I like to taste it and then not taste it and then taste it again. Uh, hey, let's talk about constipation. <laughs> and I, I is, never is deal with that. Sponsor? I never deal with constipation. I dealt with it when I was a kid. I remember being constipated every now and then when really? I was a kid. Yeah. What what is it? Is it like is, is it like dries out? Not and... eating vegetables? Is that like, what it is? Yeah. I, I, remember, I remember like not sitting on the toilet and not being able to shit and needing to shit. And so it's the worst. I, I like squeeze. I'll sit there and I'll power through it. And then I don't know if legs have anything to do with it, but do, does do your squatty potty squatty potty proven false? Oh, no, it's real. It's I've heard that they're bullshit. Really? It works for me. Yeah, yeah. I got one. You think you're sure it's not a placebo? Yeah, you're just like this is the best shit of my life. Uh, I mean, I think it's. I mean, have you ever actually <laughs> squatted to shit? Bart, would you shout that this is the best shit of my life? Every I time. haven't, Every time. but I was tempted to when I was in Japan because they had two different bathroom types. It actually is a lot easier to shit when you're squatting. Mm -hmm. The squatty potty doesn't give you an exact squat per mm -hmm. se, but it helps, I guess, they got position you in a similar way. The diagrams. Is that a patented thing? Have they are there generic versions There's generic of squatty ones. potty? Yeah. 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 They're just stools, right? Yeah, they're we don't have we don't. don't have official squatty potty brand squatty potties or rooster teeth. We don't. No. no. Bull, it's bullshit. Blaine, you're a fitness guy? You like fitness? So have you heard the have you heard the philosophy of the third world squat, which is not shitting, but like people will just in other countries they just squat yeah. to sit, yeah, and that it's like there's people that will now do that. They won't sit in a chair anymore. They just squat, squat when they need to sit. Who could do that for a prolonged time? That's the thing. It's like apparently if you do it long enough, you can just do it. Should we have a podcast where we all squat the whole time? I I'd, I'd be I'd be I, willing to. I it's could do like it a this, full this on like. I, ass to ground, yeah. uh, completely I'm, per squatting. I'm pretty good at it. I sit like that. You do actually sit like yeah. that. Yeah. If we got a microphone stand, I will promise to sit the rest of the podcast in a squat. Mike? No, you don't want that. Well, I am going commando right now, so it would be kind of what? uncomfortable. What? Are you? Yeah, because I went to the gym during lunch and I forgot to pack underwear, so. But you're in jeans, so why would that affect us? I don't know. It'd probably just like mess with my bits and they'd have to rub up against my zipper and denim and shit. You know what I mean? Oh, so it wouldn't be bad to view. It's it'd not be... like I'm gonna like. What is this? Pop Just out at any moment. It'd be a bad user experience <laughs> a, a, for you. A very thin layer of cotton is not is, <laughs> is not blocking your junk from me. 
or uh, micro modal fabric. Oh. They're I've not gone, sponsored today. I've gone They're Kimano not, before, oh, but going Kimano in jeans for, if you're a girl is wildly uncomfortable because the seam is usually right where the, the I was going to say the seam of your vagina is, but like <laughs> we, the opening of your Yeah, the, we learned offset some, that. We learned something about John Reisinger during on the spot. Oh yeah, yeah. What's that? He doesn't wear underwear? Uh, have... you, you, people should go rewatch that episode because it was interesting. Yeah, he, he doesn't have a seam. He doesn't have a seam. What does or that he mean? didn't know about it, or like there was something. You know, uh, your seam. What are you, what are you talking about? Like <laughs> on your ball sack. Oh, your ball sack seam. Yeah, yeah. What, he doesn't have one. Yeah, he's he's just like, like one. Maybe he just doesn't I, know. I was, it's I was there. talking about it with Miles or Carrie, and then John's like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> but like. Maybe no, he just doesn't know it's there. Because then he would have to just like walk like he was like a cowboy all the time. Because you need that. I asked like, him to show me and he wouldn't. <laughs> it's just smooth. Like like a Kendall? Like a bag of marbles. <laughs> Is that or, what it is? Yeah. No seam at all? Well, I don't know. That seems weird. I think that a bag of marbles has like a stitching around. I think I have it. Well, well you I don't know look? why I looked. I was like, what? <laughs> I'm not gonna uh, yeah, I shouldn't do that. Uh yeah, I got a I pr pretty I'm pretty sure I've got a seam. Everybody's got a seam. You know, we have a pretty wild workplace, but if I ever saw any of my coworkers junk, that would still be weird to me. No, yeah. not naming names. I knew somebody who worked in an environment where there was one guy who was really funny, and she said, and he was so hilarious. Like sometimes you'd be in a meeting and you'd hear it on the glass like knocking. You look over and he'd have his balls on the window. He'd get his balls out and put them on the window. I was like, <laughs> dude, if anybody did that here, that would be. Like or any, one. anywhere, Yo, right. well, yeah. Here, Les Moonface is not getting his uh, severance. He's being fired for cause. Really? The, it just came out. They decided not to give him his. Uh, Who's it? Hundred twenty million dollars severance. Sack seam? What's the, What's the segue here? Because he uh, uh, he's had uh, a lot of uh, harassment at CBS, and I guess he actively tried to cover it up and to stifle investigations into it. So CBS has decided to fire him with cause and withhold his hundred twenty million dollars severance package. Hundred twenty so, million dollars severance package. So it's not at work, but there are friends that work at Rooster Teeth that have definitely seen my balls because I do this thing that I used to do in high school where you just tuck it and then you you bend over and you're like, oh, look, a corner. <laughs> I shouldn't talk about that. That's like really bad. So wait, let, me, let me see if I get this right. Let me see if I get this right. You want to demonstrate? Not really. So it's you and your friends who definitely aren't gay and right. you <laughs> get your genitals out, right? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And then you take your balls and tuck them backwards? Yeah, you tuck them back like and then- Like where like your butthole is? So you can either have like the- So the Frank would you fuck me thing, <laughs> which I do that pretty often. But your dick's hanging out. Oh, you know, you oh, tuck both in, in oh, that situation. Both. And then the other one, no, I guess you would tuck both in both situations. Yeah, yeah. I how mean, would you tuck your balls without your dick Because the other like one's that. called a ram. It's not no, hard. how would you tuck the your dick without your balls? The other one is called a ram. Yeah, because it's got like the big- well, I mean, if you're tucking your dick between your legs, you gotta tuck your balls because right. your balls are under the dick. Yeah, but you can tuck your balls and not your dick. That's what I thought he was saying. Like, I, he right. The dick. That, seem, that seems difficult to me. Yeah, I don't think like, that that is, but I, I never, I've never tried this. Well, anyways, either way, it's a good tuck. And uh, I think like Miles, Chris, and Cole, and those are people who work a with us. A lot of people there. Yeah. You said but it's not, all, you said it's not all, people who work with us. He said, said friends who work with us, but not at work. But it, and it's not during okay. company time that I do this. So. Yeah, I'm that's safe. just say that guy. She's not during company. Chat time. is recommending we call you Buffalo Blaine. Oh. <laughs> Would you fuck me? <laughs> Male Bulgia. Thanks. So they can verify that you have a scene. Probably a yes, couple different scenes. You can bring Chris on seen. right now and he'll tell, he tell you all about my scene. Boys are weird, man. Like, I've never been a, like around a group of my girlfriends and been like, I'm going to spread my lips for you. Like, yeah, but at the same time, you're always like grabbing each other's boobs and like going, like, that's what? very true. It is true. Yeah. Guys, what listen, friendships are you? Guys witnessing? notice every single time a girl touches another girl's boobs. And we it happens like more than you think. We act like we don't, but we, we're yeah, there. Yeah, I've touched Ashley's boobs probably. Yeah. Uh, a couple you made out times. with Ashley on the... Made out. I gave her a peck on the mouth. <laughs> I haven't pecked anybody at work that... Hey, Ash, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Look who's here. Mush! Mush. He's gotten bigger. Earmuffs, mush. Oh. Earmuffs, mush. So Mush the Cat is back today. And oh, Mush was actually brought friend. back... For uh, just a visit, but it turns out there's a purpose for Mush to be here today. Now. Uh oh. Yeah, we uh, we we wanted to surprise you, Bernie. And uh, do you want to try this thing, Ashley? It, it, I... it just so happened that Mush is going to be here, so it kind of preempted our surprise. Let me grab it. Sweet little Mush. Mush we, has we talked about this on the podcast a few times. He has entered the terrible twos for a fish. For a, a fish. fish? <laughs> for a fish. We bought for a cat. The cat tongue thing. Sorry, go ahead. It's uh, we've talked about this a few times on the podcast where oh. you put it in your mouth and you can lick yes! the cat. Uh, we we had a cat doll. Can you get me that doll? That we were gonna have you. We were gonna ask you to to don't lick. touch that to, to <laughs> that. If I'm gonna use it on Mush, 
it's it's got some fur on it. So here you go. All right, I, I got to have read instructions on how to use this thing. I'm pretty sure it's pretty clear. So you're gonna have like a fatherly yeah, bond with really Mush. Care, Do you want to use this before or after me, Ash? Have you ever? <laughs> this is on the back of the package. <laughs> Neither. This News. is not a sponsored deal. Have you ever wanted to lick your cat? Now you can. <laughs> Without the fur belly. Hey, here's secret, you could have always licked your cat if you really wanted to. Mush, how are you feeling about this, bud? Meow. Yeah, Mush is bigger. Oh, this yeah, looks he's terrible. Look so at you this. put that in your mouth. And, oh, and why is there, is there stuff on the back side of the tongue? Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't know what that's for. What, Maybe so you can for? go like scrape. So you can go like, up and down. <laughs> One more time. No, no. No, no. You gotta put the lips inside your lips. Yeah, it's I'm like, not a, doing it's like that. a football mouth guard. No, no, you put it just that part inside your teeth. You don't have to put Here? that whole thing inside your mouth. No, you gotta put no, the whole thing in your mouth. You the whole thing in the lips like this. Oh, there it is. There it is. I don't think it's gonna fit. No, that's too big. That's too big. You don't <laughs> no, do no, that. No, no, no. You got it. That's that's right. <laughs> no, you don't. Just, just. That's my fetish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, mush. Yeah, there it is. Now you got right. a really good grip on it. Look away, mush. He'll love it. Hmm. Cats love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you look so stupid! <laughs> oh my god. Does Mush like Mush it? Mush doesn't care. I think he's kind of okay with it. He's putting his face on it. Oh no. <laughs> he's pissed. He's like, oh dad, what'd you do to me? That is not enjoyable to me. <laughs> I don't feel like I'm any closer to Mush than I, I was think before. You just, I think you just bite down on that thing. I don't Ash, think... you want to try this? No, no that's a solid <laughs> no. That's a solid no from Ash. The one thing advantage that I can see to that is that you have both hands to keep on the cat, who's probably not wanting to get brushed, and so then like it frees yeah. up your hands. Oh, I like, love this guy so much, man. He's, he's so been so cute. great. He is reaching a point though. Uh, Mush, come here. Like I was saying, his terrible twos. No kitties. Uh, where he. Uh, he has two modes, essentially. He has one where he's completely racked out, almost asleep, and just laying there, and so docile, and he's like a total cuddle bug. The other mode, and there's no in between, the other mode, he's like the Tasmanian devil of all teeth and claws. It just oh, bites God. everything that he can find. So glad he's near us. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Get him, Gus. Get him. You know what's crazy? If you use your finger, he'll definitely go after it. No? Maybe he's just... He's really fascinated by this stuff. He's looking at all of our Christmas decorations. But Mush has been great. He's been a, he's been a, right away a great cat. He's a very kindred spirit of Joe the cat's because I have a photo of Joe from the old office. Uh, he's sleeping on one of the red versus blue controllers. He's mm -hmm. using the mm -hmm. controller as a pillow, and mm -hmm. then Mush did the same thing while, while I was playing the other. I was playing Red Dead, and he just climbs up in my lap and then just puts his head on my controller while I'm playing and falls asleep. It's and I'm like bumping in his head that and moving and everything. That is the cutest photo I've ever seen. He's just laid out. I love the photo of him. A little blip. The other photo I posted on Instagram of him where he's just like looking over and his eyes are just so wild. He's a great cat. That's though, a tat cat. He's really good. Sophie's got a really cute dog. I tried to get her to come by. Oh, yeah, that Arthur. dog. That dog's really cute. Oh. Yeah. I was so close to adopting Arthur. Dude, yeah. wait. Why? Where'd you he come from? Did the opportunity? Um, so did he come from our a... mutual friend who fosters animals? No. Okay. Um, there's someone in sales who has the same breed of dog. And he came into the office, the marketing office, and was like, um, so my dog actually has a brother who's up for adoption. Mm. And I'm really hoping someone at the office adopts him so that, you know, if I wanted her to visit him or if someone needs me to look after the dog, we can, because mm -hmm. he'll be like within the family. And uh, he sent me the link and I looked it up and it was like the cutest fucking dog I've ever seen. And I was like, ah, this would be the perfect dog to adopt because he's small yeah. and he's like manageable. You can't have so, a dog. But like I, I'm never so, home. So, you, just, you travel too much. It's, for someone who travels, yeah. it's almost cruel to get a dog. Yeah, Some people exactly. in the sales office are really jealous because that dog is skittish and afraid of a lot of people. But when I walk in, it like it'll come right up to me. Yeah. yeah it doesn't bark at me. It like jumps in my lap. It's interesting because you're such a tall person. So I feel like the bigger and more imposing you'd be, the more scared it'd be. I think, you think it's like a, something with your scent. It knows that I have little dogs or something. Yeah, I don't know. that makes sense. I have uh, I had that same relationship with Adam's dog. Rebel, yeah, but it's only because every time he came to the office, I fed him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> same with me. <laughs> it's and funny every time I would go over to Adam Baird's house, Rebel would come right up to me. Right. He's just like food time, <laughs> and they're like, "Wow, that dog really likes you." I He's think a best. lot of people have that strategy. Yeah, <laughs> he told me that Rebel would come to the office and gain like. 10 That's pounds. how I got Trevor to like me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got Mush Cam, little, little <gasps> Pip. Mush Cam. Yeah, his uh, 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 his colors are starting to come in. Beep beep. How big is he gonna get? 
don't know. Who knows? I guess that's a, a weird cat. question for a cat. Yeah. Because cats always get to about the same. Yeah, I feel like they're cat size. Yeah. He's three pounds right now. Can, is he really? Hmm? Right, Ash? Three pounds? Three and a half pounds. Three and a half pounds. Ooh. And I think we got him. He was like a pound and a half. He so was here, what, two weeks ago? He's packing it on. Something like that. Do yeah. they have, like, like okay. fucker eats all the time. Do they have, like, is this a dumb question? Do they have DNA testing for, like, a cat? Can you tell, like, 23 and me for cats? Yeah. <laughs> like, can you tell, like, what person? Because, like, I, I did a test on one of my this dogs. This cat hates salon. And it tells you, like, really? What kind of, uh, the breed and stuff? Yeah, what no kind shit. of breeds, uh, have caused that dog. Did you buy yours thinking it was a purebred? And then I bought mine thinking it was not a purebred. I did not want a purebred. Okay. And it turned out it was. Would you clone uh, your dog? A purebred. Yeah. Would you clone Oswald? No, I don't think I'd clone my dogs. Yeah. Why? What's the argument against? Uh, I just feel like it wouldn't be the same. Like I'd be trying to get the same dog, and there's so much that goes into it. Like so much as far as I'll be like, I'm, I'm sure you know, their their genetic makeup incorp incorporates a lot into their personality. But yeah. there's a lot that happens in their life. I so think that shapes them. Like also, animals have personalities that mm -hmm. don't necessarily translate. Mm -hmm. If like e they could be raised by the same owner in the mm. same household, but ha like be have completely different personalities. Yeah, I, w I, w I wouldn't want to have like a like a weird experience with the same dog. If I wanted, you know, another one, I'd just get a another dog. If you like do that. clone Oswald, let me know because I would love. Oh man, how cute was that photo I showed oh you? Where he was like God. staring into the sun. You would get a clone of Scrappy, I bet. Scrap what? Uh, <gasps> Mike's dog. Scrappy, Scrappy the dog. Mike and Darshell's dog. Oh dog. man, yeah. Ooh. Scrappy, and have you seen their new dog, Pixel? Dude, he's like a smaller version of Scrappy. It's. it's Kills it's, me. It's too much. I was like, I, this is too much too cuteness. Much. I love keeping up with those two. They have like a really funny relationship. They have like cute dogs. They're just, yeah, they're just yeah, enjoyable. They're just beautiful people. Yeah, they're just cool. Beautiful, talented people. Fucking scrappy. I love that dog. Uh, I remember hey, when you met him at RTX first. Time. God, I was so happy. I didn't realize how high Darshell ranks in terms of overall like Patreon subs. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. She's up there. Yeah. yeah. A lot. I, I, just, I just didn't she know that. She works her ass off. Yeah, dude. She puts out some That awesome is content. a lot of work. Yeah. It seems like the two hardest jobs are. That and Twitch, like people who stream eight hours a day for seven days Anything a week. Anything where you're the sole person responsible for creating and putting out content there, and pleasing a, a very demanding audience is difficult. There, w yeah. there was a Verge article that Freddie Wong was tweeting over the weekend that was talking about how, I, I, wanna, I forget the exact number off the top of my head, uh, but I want to say it's like if you get 25 constant viewers when you're Twitch streaming in a month, that you're in the top 99% of Twitch streamers. Wow. No shit, really. Yeah, and that, and and then Freddie was, you know, extrapolating from there, talking about streaming. Like, he wonders what the formula is. Like, what's the bare minimum number of viewers you need to have to cover costs like your electricity, your bandwidth? Yeah. Like, the, the hard costs that you don't think about that are associated with going into doing that line of work. It's like, you don't think about it, but it's like, you really need a good number of viewers. It's not what's like you're just going to turn on a camera fire up your computer and instantly start making money. And what's, there's a, yeah, what's the average viewership then? Well, I mean, 99%'s gotta be, you know, it's gotta skew that down to like three or four, right? Yeah. Something's it's, it's 23, rough. you said? 23 viewers or 25? 25, I believe. 25 at 99%. I'm sure there's a way to figure that out. I don't know how to do that formula yeah. in my head, but uh, it's gotta be significantly lower for everybody else. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just a distribution across I mean, the sure, remaining 99%. I'm sure there's plenty of streamers who get zero. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so so it's that saying here, to he, start. He, it was something that he retweeted, it says, uh, I don't know the exact figures, but with tools like Sully Gnome, you learn that if you hold 25 CCV for a month, that puts <laughs> you in the top 1% of all streamers, the top 25,000. Wow. Uh, I've read that 75% of streamers never have more than 5 CCV. Wow. Never have more than 5. Yeah. We That's talked about this years ago with other social media stuff, which I think consider Twitch to be a part of that. Uh, like with Twitter, it's like there's people, you know, most people don't have more than probably 10 followers, I wouldn't say. Like fewer people that they know personally, mm. if that. Uh, Twitter has the advantage of being around a little bit longer, so there's a lot of bots that follow people as well. But it's just, uh, yeah, it's those are, those are normal numbers, you know? Mm -hmm. I, dude, I, one of the that bugs me about social media is just like that number, especially for kids that grow up with it, they grow up with a number next to their name. I did not grow up with a number next mm. to my name. That's a weird thing. And we have to acknowledge that. An inherent popularity contest yeah. you can point yeah. to. Just like, it says your name and then it says a number. And oh, that number like is like, like followers likes. or likes or whatever. We, right? I mean, I think our generation was dipping into that with like MySpace and Facebook. Yeah. MySpace especially. Well, like, I can't imagine now with, like, between Snapchat, Instagram, and so, Twitter. You say that. The other day, I was, I was reading the fucking New York Times, and this is an actual headline from the New York Times. I couldn't believe it. 48 of the coolest kids in New York 
Whoa, that's not really. Cool. <laughs> yeah, but that that would have been an article. That would have been the equivalent of like a social media thing when you and I were kids, Gus. If someone put out a ranking of how cool the kids in the school yeah. were, that would have been like weird and gross. Yeah, right. We, we sent a photographer to look for the most fashionable kids in the city. She began on the first day of school and shot for two months. Here are the standouts. Like, nope. What? That's Why? really weird. Why? New York Times, huh? Yeah. What are they doing? Slow week. <laughs> trying to keep up. With, trying to keep up with Instagram. It's tough. I get mm -hmm. it. So they're having a tough time. What do you yep. prefer nowadays, Instagram or Twitter? I'm really starting to move more toward Instagram. I feel like a lot of people oh. are. Yeah, we were, we like were big holdouts. Like I didn't make an Instagram account until last year. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm my my Instagram account is barely over a year old at this yeah. point. Yeah. I don't really use it all that much, except for funny videos. I feel like I, I should make it more of a habit. I think you've made a habit of posting on like Twitter recently. Mm -hmm. You got like great tweets every day, but it's just like I just write jokes on it. Actually, I feel effort. like I do feel like. I shouldn't do that because it just like I get my creative fulfillment like oh, I made a funny joke today or whatever It's like mm. I used to do that with scripts and I find I'm writing less lately Yeah, you know, although the thing that I'm currently working on is less jokey So maybe it's an outlet for that, but I I am thinking about like your pairing, autobiography pairing that stuff down Well, if you have like 15,000 I'm gonna ignore that Barbara if you have about <laughs> 15,000 tweets or whatever then it's it's a lot of volume after a while. Yeah. It's like if I just put that amount of effort every day into like writing something, I'd have a couple novels at this point. Yeah, we went through and like figured out from 140 characters times some people have hundreds of thousands of tweets. Like I, I I've seen people that like people I follow that have 130, 140 thousand tweets. Wow. And if you do the mul the math on the words. It's it's literally like 10, 12 novels. Well, and even now with 280 being the character limit. That's right. Now it's 280. It's yeah. Up, yeah, I thought that was going to be a weird thing. It's not weird at all. I'm very happy it happened. It's just like a forum. It's yeah. yeah it's it, it just not bothering me as much as I thought it would. Yeah. I, I was uh, happy when they made it so that URLs and images didn't count in your character count. Mm -hmm. That was a big step. And tagging people. Yeah, because you need to be able you need to be able to put images on the Rooster Teeth website. You can now post images directly into a journal post or just a general post now. Mm -hmm. And we didn't. know It's weird how long we didn't have that. Yeah, we were, we were wanting that forever. Just posting an image, yeah. yeah. And it was like, but it's like hosting that stuff and getting it up there and encoding it. Because a lot of times you have to take an image, so people will put like an eight megabyte image. Mm. And you got to like, you know, scale it so that other people can see it. Some of these GIFs, they get up to like hundreds of, yeah. hundreds of megs. It's fucking It'd be crazy. easier to watch a fucking video. It is. And there are people, there's bots on Reddit that will go through and edit GIFs into FLVs or what is it? Is yeah. it something else? You can get FLV. The video? I don't think it's an FLV though. It's I think like a I'm flash like, video? Yeah. I don't think it's that. Oh, uh, like talking about like a MP4 or something? Maybe so. But some, web, some kind of WebM. Uh, uh, hey, uh, I want to say uh, this episode of the Receipts Podcast is brought to you by 23andMe. Do your arms and legs twitch while you're sleeping? With 23andMe Sleep Movement Report, you can discover how your genetics may be influencing how much you move your arms and legs during your sleep. Many people dislike cilantro, describing the taste as soapy. Do you have the genetic markers associated with this taste? Or if you hear a musical note, can you sing it back? Genetics can play a role in that too. 23andMe is a personal genetic service that helps you understand what your DNA can tell you about you and your family story. A 23andMe DNA kit is the perfect gift for everyone you love. There's never been a better way to give the gift of genetic discovery to your parents, your siblings, your aunts, grandparents, everyone else on your list. With 23andMe's Ancestry Composition Report, you can explore where your DNA is from out of 150 regions worldwide. You can discover the origins of your maternal and paternal ancestors and how they moved around the world over thousands of years. You can trace parts of your ancestry to a specific group of individuals from over a thousand years ago. So now through December 25th, get 30% off any 23andMe kit. Order your DNA kit at 23andMe.com slash rooster. That's the number 23andme.com slash rooster. Again, that's 23andme.com slash rooster. Uh, so I thought it'd be interesting. I pulled up my ancestry report. Uh, I found to see, like, I mean, I've, we've talked about this forever. So you can see, like, this is an example that you would get. So if you ever, so if the oh, reason. Look, you're 100% Gustavo oh, 100% Gustavo <laughs> Thank Sorola. God. The reason people ask what ethnicity I am, I guess, is because I'm all of them. <laughs> yeah, Broadly much. East Asian. What's the highest percent? I, I can't uh, read from Native that Native American. Part. Mexico. Gotcha. Uh -oh. And that's what is that? Well, As, do I say Spanish descent? Nigerian? You're Native, Native American? No, Native, Mexican? yeah. Interesting. Do you know Incan Mayan? Do you know? Uh, no, I don't know. I mean, that's, a, that's the most drill down I can get. Have you done yours yet, Blake? Cool. No, I have not. I'm, I'm curious to see what your background is. I might, I might do that. Yeah. yeah. It's going to just be like 100% Spartan. And I'll be like, oh, there <laughs> we go. Wow. Look at so you. shocked. In chat, Boris of 007 says, yeah. Blaine's ancestry is muscles and protein powder. 80% bro. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, um, I, I had a really cool thing that just came up where there was a service 
I've always said nutrition is specific to people genetically. It's got to fucking be. Otherwise, we'd have it figured out by now. You know, exercise too a little bit and sleep patterns and things like that. But there's a company that came out that will say, hey, if we have your genome, we'll send you a little kit or whatever. Da, 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 and we'll tell you what you should be doing. What you're, If you're sensitive to carbs, for instance, uh, are you better for endurance training? And it goes through and it explains all the markers uh, once you do their kit. Or if you already have a 23andMe account, like I have, because we did it on a podcast for me years ago, mm -hmm. uh, you can just like go check a box and then just pay the fee and it like grabs your data from 23andMe and you get your report instantly. That's so I, cool. I just did that the other day. I was, in fact, I was with you. Yep, we were it got brought about up it. at, we, we had, Gus and I have a lunch. We have a lunch together. Hey. It's very, it's very romantic. It's yeah. me and Matt and Jeff and Gus, and we all go and we it's, have lunch. It's called a 20 plus year friends club. And then you raise Teslas. Is <laughs> it uh, is it every week? So once a month. Oh, no. Oh, once a month. Month. That's, That's cute. Once a month is what it's supposed to what be. Are we supposed yeah. to, it was supposed to be once a month. We've done it twice since July. Yeah, it's like six months. We do like once every three months. Who so. would be, We're getting better. Who, who would be at our lunch? I guess it'd be the people who were like hired around the same gender. Well, Barbara, it would be you and Gav, for sure. Me, Gav. Michael? Yeah. I just passed five years. Jordan Swears. Yeah, we had we had a, a big company meeting the other day, and uh, we had a bunch of uh, people go up to get recognized for their five year anniversary working at Rooster Teeth. Yeah. And it was it was it was cool to see all of you guys on stage and think like, I feel like that's when the company really started taking off. Like seeing those people who were up there five years ago. Yeah, it's like it that's was like twenty thirteen. It was like in the forties is when I came on board. So we're about forty some strong. Yeah. But yeah. There I was like a lot of folk up there. First year it. This building, I think we just passed 60. Yeah. So, yeah, when you were hired, probably around 40. Because I was at 636 for a while between the internship and, yeah, mm -hmm. early on. Yeah, you, like, you were up there, John Reisinger. Gray Haddock was. Gray came Doreen. In. Pat. Doreen was Joe. up there. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was, was Maggie there. up there? Yes. Maggie, Maggie was, was up, up there. there. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember the rest of that night, though. I'll tell you that much. Oh, what happened? Uh, <laughs> well, uh, after the meeting was a company party <laughs> and. Well, so I do remember there was a bit. This was on Friday, by the way. This was on Friday. Yeah. Uh, so we were having our company party up here on like level whatever. And then right Four. below us. Yes. And right below us. On level three. Was on level three was the Napa like auto parts, like trade show party where it was just like car parts and all sorts. It of, was everyone you know. in like light blue button up shirts and, and slacks. Right. So Miles and uh, my good friend Drew Saplin, who uh, is a, a very talented director. He, he directed did, the director War on Christmas. No, he did. War on Christmas special. Uh, they went up there and they fit right in because they just look like <laughs> just like dudes that would work in that industry. You don't look like a guy who'd work at an auto parts place? Is that like an insult? I don't, I don't, well, no, not to them. They just look like more mature humans. I feel like I stick out because they'd be like, who's this Metrosexual guy, and I'm like, hey. um, well, so your like, balls were tucked back between your legs. <laughs> <laughs> Would you fuck me? <laughs> so, like, me, Eric, Alana, and Chris caught wind that this was going on, and we're like, well, we have to go and crash this party. So, we went downstairs and we all stuck out. We made it in. Miles was like, you guys got to divide and conquer. You're gonna, you got to separate, or else we're gonna call you out. And then he, like, Went off into the you know into the party and they had like gambling and churros and Frito pies and all sorts of stuff It was like stepping into Vegas So we're like wow, this is great. This guy comes up and he's immediately like and he looked like how Bernie looks right now with the mustache uh, And he had a buzz cut. Yeah, oh. and he had this big old smile. And he said uh he, he had a Napa shirt a Napa shirt and a Napa badge and he said uh hey Napa. Who are you guys with and then I was oh. like I was like Napa <laughs> social team and he was like, oh, yeah? And I was like, yep. And he was like, uh, who do you work for? Oh, no. And I go, Napa. And, he went, <laughs> and Eric, what did he say? He's like, he's like, he, he looked back at you and he went, you're pretty slick. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. So only you got kicked out? No, like, like the whole group. Um, they, they did you get the whole group kicked out? Yeah. Fucker. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, like Drew and Miles were still, they were like off getting wine and. Yeah, so they churros were churros okay. and winning free televisions and shit. Yeah, oh my god, they want free televisions. We had if no free televisions you, at our party. I would have just looked across the party and pointed at Miles. Go, I work for him. <laughs> That's Miles. Have you met Miles yet? Go say hi. He works for Social also. <laughs> He's yeah. in charge of Social. Blaine works for him. But then on the way back up, we ran into another party and they had a photo booth and we we're like, let's go get our photos taken. Oh we like god. went over to the photo booth and we we're like getting ready to pose and they're like. Who are you with? And we're like, no, we're with you guys. And they're like, we're with you You're guys. You're with DSI. And we're like, yep. And they're like, get out of here. It's <laughs> <laughs> like a menace, man. It's Rooting. like a wedding crashers, but holiday party crashers. There's nothing at stake. 
Oh no, absolutely nothing. Not. And it was the Nobody best. Cares. What are they yeah. gonna do? And I was also hoisted. So <laughs> <laughs> I always know if Blaine's been drinking. If he like at the end of the night, he's saying bye, and he's like, give, "Come on, give me a hug." <laughs> uh, I, I get all emotional. At one point, I was squatting John. And what what go on? What does that mean? Well, I had like John got on my back and shitting? I had him over the side and I was doing squats mm. with him. So I'm doing squats and then at one point Eric was like, turn around. And there was like the hotel staff were like staring at me. And there was this one lady that was like like this. And I looked at her and I was like, ah! oh, God. <laughs> like doing squats like ass to grass. <laughs> I think I broke some Christmas ornaments with my bare hands. Yeah. Because Eric oh, tried. Are, squeezed Wait, are you a fucking menace? A couple other doing? people did that too. <laughs> Eric dared me too. Eric. I We didn't dare him. It Me and Chris Damaris said, we heard that no one can break these ornaments with their hands. <laughs> That's basically a dare. <laughs> and so he did it. Kovic did yeah. it. A couple other people did it. Were they, they were glass? Sarah Weems yeah, from Achievement Hunter did. And she got, uh, so I turn around, her hands full of blood. She did? Yeah. What? Really? And she's like, I think I might have cut myself. <laughs> You're covered in blood. <laughs> Who did That's that? why we Sarah said we Weems. heard they couldn't. Oh my do it. god, really? I didn't bad see any of this. Influences. This is at the end, like you guys, past, are, you guys are awful. Past the end of the night. This is after the party had finished and we were just in the ballroom area for another hour and a half. You're like achievement hunter when they wrecked that hotel. Yeah. Still doing it. No, uh, so tell some story about like slightly messing up a hotel room and people held their feet to the fire over that. Oh. For one, a long time. Of, one of the things that uh, we did at that um, meeting was we showed a lot of people in the company some Everyone. of the beginning of Genlock. Yeah, yeah we did. Who was there? Yeah, and uh, we actually have a little clip of that <gasps> first episode. Get the fuck out of here, Diana, really, that we can show here during the podcast. So, so uh, let's, uh, let's let's cue that up. This is how the war begins. All wings engage. Interceptors three and four take bogeys. Two o'clock. Angel six. Do you see that? I see it. Contact. Hostile net attack. Shit. Still your cockpit. Do not engage. This is not a skirmish. This is not airspace confusion. This is not a terrorist action. This is it. The Union's making their play. Hell yeah. I got chills, dude. Hell yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I've seen episode one twice and episode two once. And the second time I saw episode one, I was still like, oh, yeah, like it's I think I've seen it now six or seven times. It's fucking it's so good. There's but one every, shot in particular. Every time I watch it, I'm like, I'm enthralled by this. Yeah. yeah. Which yeah. shot? Which shot? I can't say because it's but it's a great introduction for something. Oh, <laughs> yeah. The uh, thing that introduces the other thing. Yeah. yeah so good. It's the first episode. I get some pretty wicked goose. Very much too. like uh, I like the way they handled the. Uh, uh, first episode is very much like jumping onto a moving train. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel about it. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean, it's like, but you still understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like, you it's like this is everything. a world in motion. Come on, let's and go. They don't spend too much explaining every <laughs> detail of, nope. the, of the world, which it's, I think could get a little slow. It has yeah. the same effect as Halo does, which is I play it and I immediately want to go to the gym and work out because I'm just so fucking like, yeah. <sighs> And there's like cool characters that are like fucking bros, yeah. so, like Sinclair. Yeah, there is you it, go. Uh, is it? I haven't seen Spider-Man yet, but is it true the animation style is pretty similar? The end of the Spider Verse, like yeah. animated on twos that. and threes and things like that, threes and fours. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's uh, well, it's it? you know uh, CG based or three D based uh, animation. Ruby dealt with this a lot in its first season. Was when it came out. People said it looks like a video game cutscene because it was so smooth and 3D and everything. And so, like, Spider-Verse is that 3D style as well, but also with stylized, like, 2D. Mm -hmm. So they do the same thing. It's like this new style where um, they animate it such a way that replicates, like, traditional anime styles. Very cool. Did you have you seen Spider-Verse? No, not yet. Very good. You've seen Number one in the box office this week. I've heard Very nothing good. but, like, I, every single person I follow who's seen it, yeah. just, like, go see this movie. Just yeah, I think it was, they said it set a record for an animated movie in December, which is a weird record to have. But Yeah, there's always something like, so yeah. like, like $35 million or something. Yeah. It nope. just looks fun. No one here seen it? I have not seen yeah. it. Oh, I have. I saw it. Uh, Ashley yeah. and I went to go see it. Uh, where's Ashley? Let's go leave the podcast now. See ya. It's good, though. It's, I always admire in a movie... Spider Verse, Matrix, movies like that, when they take what is a really very hard to understand for a broad audience sci fi concept and they distill it down to where it's it's totally accessible. And Spider Verse is, I mean, just the name of it, Spider Verse, is it could have definitely lost some people, but the way they went about explaining it worked really well. And even like the motivations for some of the characters and everything was really, really cool. Yeah. yeah. Can't wait. So, and it was uh, some, some surprising voices that were in that. Hmm. 
Hmm. I liked it. Uh, they got fucking Sabretooth. Leaf Schreiber. That's yeah. exactly what I was thinking about. I love Sh Leaf Schreiber. Yeah. Huh. He's like a man's man. He's awesome. On the other end of the spectrum, I saw that Mortal Engines did terrible. Is that true? Yeah. No. Is that too bad? I think it only opened to $7.5 million. Okay. Which is like crazy. That's low. Yeah. Do you want to hear something yeah. really fucking crazy? So mm. Aquaman's already open in China, and it might be open other places now after this last weekend. Is it but good? But it opened like two weeks ago. Ash, you want to jump on and tell us your quick thoughts on Spider Verse? Got any quick thoughts on Spider Verse? Uh, oh, she's doing that. I'll, she's I'll, let me tell in. This, uh. Let me tell this Aquaman anecdote. I should also say, by the way, not to get too far off the path, but back to something earlier. Uh, my brother-in-law in college, I, he's now my former brother-in-law, uh, I've known him for years, known him since high school. He calculated uh, the cost of buying his own tuxedo, which was about 400 bucks at the time. Mm -hmm. He bought his own tuxedo so that every weekend he could go to weddings. He would just show up at like this one club in Austin, country club, walk in in the tuxedo and nobody would ever stop him. And he would just like fill up on food and drinks every fucking wow. weekend That's, for $400. That's not bad. He was I want to do that now. He plays. Uh, he, look, I don't think people expect you to be in a tuxedo, though. Well, I'll just go Napa, and then I'll, <laughs> and I'll be welcome wherever. I work for you. <laughs> Social <My> media. <laughs> Social media. You know what you should have said when he said, "Get out of here." You should have yelled at the top of your lungs. You can't fire me. I quit <laughs> right before oh. the holidays, and then just stormed out. And then everyone would hated that guy for getting rid of you. And he was like, that guy doesn't even work here. They're like, because you fired him. <laughs> you fired, you're a jerk. But I was just saying, it's the Aquaman thing really quickly before uh, we talk about Spider-Verse. Uh, Aquaman opened in China, and I think it did some ridiculous amount of money in the first day. I forget what it was. It was like tens of millions of dollars in, in day one. That wasn't the fucking stat that stuck with me, though. You know what the stat was? Aquaman opened in China on 30 thousand screens. Wow. Holy 30, shit. Infinity War, just for reference, Infinity War in the US at its max was on 6,000 screens. Yeah. I had no idea I, the market in China was that, was that huge. I thought oh. the biggest opening I thought I knew of was like 4,500, maybe getting close to 5,000. Right. Only, that's weird to me that Infinity Wars was only on 6,000. That seems low. That's that, a lot for that, US, That's man. like the most. It's Is a ton. It? I've never, I didn't even know we got to 6,000 screens, screens in the US. Have. I remember it was a big deal when, uh, when movies started to break to come out on more than two thousand screens, like around yeah. the time of Titanic, that was a big deal. Damn, thirty thousand Gus, thirty thousand screens. That's really crazy. That's a lot of people. Just it's a 30, lot of thousand people. people in general. But yeah, then it also kind of like really lowered the per screen average of this big number. I know that Aquaman. <laughs> like I two I would, people at one, yeah. five people at another. <laughs> I would totally open a movie in China if I was a big studio and say like, oh yeah, look, we made all this money and here it comes to the We're US. On twenty thousand screens. Although. uh well, I don't know. It's uh China's a big pirating culture there. Yeah. They said I mean the but then I guess who's gonna pirate the movie in native Chinese, right? I don't think a lot of people in the US yeah, are played, gonna learn it okay. I'm I'm reading about Cantonese the Aquaman to thing. watch Aquaman early. It played on twenty five thousand screens, nearly half of those available in China. So it didn't even open on all the screens. Oh, is that what it was? They have yeah. fifty thousand yeah. screens available. Oh, yeah, the number I read was thirty. So you're saying twenty five thousand? Yeah, I'm reading this on Variety. Isn't that fucking crazy, dude? I forget the article that I read, but I went back and like was trying to double check. I go, clearly they misprinted that. They meant 3,000 3, screens, and I and I kept looking it up, and it was nope. It stayed thirty thousand. Hey oh, Ash, what do you think of Spider Verse? I mean, I don't know if it's gonna topple Aquaman for quality December release, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was real good. Yeah, it's real good. Is it gonna get an Oscar for? Do they have an animation? Part? I think they yeah, have an they animated. Do. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's gonna get an Oscar. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's really cool and it's very stylized, but for a lot of people, it might be too much because yeah. it's like a whole lot of comic styling. Very much. And if so. you're not if you're not into that kind of thing, it can probably be real overwhelming. So but I don't know if it's gonna go as wide as a lot of the other Marvel stuff there's, has. There's lots of Spider Mans in it, right? So many Spider Man. What's, well, what's your favorite Spider Man? Spider Peeps. Oh, uh, Spider Bot. Spider Bot. I like Spider. -Bot. I like Spiders Man. Penny. Yeah, yeah, Penny Parker. Well, don't, 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 yeah, so don't, don't, don't ruin anything though. But it's, yeah, it's super cute. I didn't yeah. know that he was in that, but that sounds cool though. <laughs> I, I like know nothing about. It. I've only seen the trailers. Oh, I, I, don't, I don't. I haven't seen it either. Oh, I just heard. Really, we, uh, I heard we, about we, Spiders Man. We won't spoil anything. Well, for then you. don't ask me those questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just the, uh, curious. I just want to know. I want to know about the Spider Man. I didn't see the trailers. I didn't see anything. So That's 100 percent yeah. correct though. Whereas all the Marvel movies that have come out to date are great superhero movies. This is a great comic book movie. I mean, it's mm. very much like a living comic book, would you say? Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, they, go, they use panels all the time. But it might drive some people fucking nuts. Well, I feel like that's a good way of like pushing the, the medium, though. Was, like, wasn't the Ang Lee Hulk movie also done like that, where the, it would cut in with panels? Dude, I went into the Ang Lee Hulk movie so. with an actual Hulk shirt, and I came out, and I was just like, fuck this movie. Which like, was the Eric Bana one? Is that? Yes, it yeah. was horseshit. There was a part where a guy explodes, and then it outlines his body like it's a comedy movie or some shit. Fuck that movie, man. But that's uh, Scott Pilgrim. When they turned that into a movie, that's a great movie. Think about that. Cause that's very comic book. They, they yeah. graphic novel. It's a little bit like that, but that was a live action thing. Yeah, yeah. But it was. I never saw what was the, what was the other one that came out. It was very super stylized. It almost looked like. I always thought Monty would have loved it. God, what the fuck was that movie called? So it was a superhero. Sugar, so it was. God, what was it called? Oh, oh, oh uh, Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch. Thank you. That's exactly what I was thinking about. I was thinking about Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch. There's also the other one with the. Uh, <sighs> Never saw it. Never gonna think about that. Sucker oh. Punch? Yeah. Yeah, neither did I. I think I watched uh God, I would love to go back and watch Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon because that was like a Marvel. I watched it out. not that long ago. Is it hold up? It holds up. This it holds really up good. it holds up really well. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Because I, I remember I, I watch it every now and then. Yeah. I'd like to make a period, like a genre period movie, because I feel like those things are almost timeless because you can't spot when they were made. Because it's like, oh, this is set in, you know, like the eighteen hundreds. So it's like you don't know when it was actually Filmed. Yeah. See, I always feel like there's some period things that you can do that are super easy. Yeah. Like you could film something in New York and you go to like a, a street of brownstones and that could be anywhere from like 1930 to present day. Yeah. You can't really do that in Austin. You go back to like 1930 in Austin, it's dirt roads. Yeah. You know, and tiny little like there's a Woolworths on the corner and that's the big hub, you know. But or like in London, it's London. You can go to parts of London that look like they're from like 1600. Mm -hmm. I was thinking of kick ass. That movie, oh, Man, Kick -Ass. also very stylized. It the, sucks. The Quicksilver movie. Kick Ass was great. Kick Ass Two, not great. I never saw Kick Ass Two. Yeah, me. Uh, Kingsman One, great. Kingsman <gasps> Two, don't say this. It wasn't good. It was not good. <laughs> oh, you're, go, you're go like circle. Kingsman the first one. What was you? What were you leaving behind to not like Kingsman Two? Wait, you did you like Kingsman Two? Yeah, that was fine. Yeah. Cash Kingsman. Two, one, fine. It had one of my favorite current uh, actors, no, Pedro Pascal. Uh, major sin underutilized Channing Tatum. Oh, that's Channing true. Yeah. Tatum's in yeah. the second one. Yeah. No, barely. He's barely. Like a, he's, like a, uh, he's all over the marketing, but he's barely in it. But uh, he's yeah. uh, he's real good with a whip or a lasso or something. I'm confused. What? And he's also either in this one, movie. both. And I, I didn't like the um, the way they brought or the, what they did with Colin Firth in the second one. Oh, I can see that. He was I, in I, it? The Lepidopter. Le <laughs> yeah, he was, yeah. Sorry, uh, sorry. sorry. I mean, all of that story with him, I was like, uh, they, they should have either. Just not had him come back, or how was John Wick too? That's another one I didn't see. Uh, I've seen both, but I can't okay. tell you that there's just a bunch of people get shot. Yeah. yeah, people were like, John Wick Two is way better than John Wick One, which I don't agree with, but it was pretty fucking cool. I just yeah. know that there's an adorable dog in the first one and in the second one. Okay, is good it noted. We're at the yeah. end of the year. What's a movie you'd recommend to people you think they haven't seen this year? I'll give you mine because you guys are talking about John Wick and reminding me of it. Hold on, you probably haven't seen it. There's a movie called Upgrade. You should go see mm, that. Yeah. Oh, that's like that's like better Venom. It even has like Dude, off Venom's off brand like one Tom of the Hardy. Top three or four movies of the year. But is it good? Box office. I haven't seen it. I, I saw a out, couple man. weeks ago. I saw a Korean film called Burning, which is really good. It's got Steven Yeun in it. You know from Walking Dead. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I gotta it's, look it's up really movies. good. I think it's a, it's a little long. It's about two and a half hours long, and I wish that they had shaved some of it off. But it's a really good. Uh, Really good movie. Uh, Mission Possible Fallout. That was oh, good. Yeah. yeah, Fallout was so and good. And then fucking Paddington 2. Dude, I love Paddington. That yeah, I keep wanting to see it because everyone who sees like Hannah oh. and Elise and everybody just raves about this movie. I cried uh, in Paddington 2. It there just was teared me up. A lot of good movies this year. I feel like I, I didn't see Paddington 1. I'd be lost. Game Night was good. I think. Uh, Game Night was good. Was that this year? Yeah, Game Night's really. It was good. surprisingly good. I went in with low that, expectations. That'd be one I think a lot of people haven't seen. Yeah, that if, one's really good. Don't uh, get like your hot. Don't get your hopes up really high, but yeah. like, just go and be like, I got There's some time to kill. A yeah. movie that yeah. came out this year that I think I don't think a lot of people know about. It's an indie film called uh, Avengers: Infinity War. Yeah, <laughs> you made it Take through. It. <laughs> good delivery. Uh, but no, I was actually just looking at the releases this year. Eighth Grade was oh, awesome. Yeah, that, that was funny. good. First Man. Gucci. If you guys saw that one. First um, Man, I had some issues with how it was shot. Really, I thought the cinematography was beautiful. 
Um, it's got Ryan Gosling in every show. Yeah. yeah, Incredibles two. That's a great sequel. Still haven't seen it. That's weird. Oh, it's coming so to Netflix good. next month. Honestly, I think. I didn't. The first one wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. No, I know. It's true. shut up. It's the perfect good. movie. It I wasn't is. twelve. You're going to scare the no. Guy. I was Incredibles was really old. good. I wasn't twelve either. It's my dad's yeah. favorite movie. I I watched that recently. <laughs> it is still the perfectly <laughs> paced film. It yeah. never stops. It's awesome. I don't know. I was hoping for more because it was Pixar and superheroes. Okay. Ralph breaks the internet. Also another sequel, which is phenomenal. I didn't see right um, And that's one. pretty new, so I don't know if a lot of people have gotten the chance to see I still it. Haven't, I still haven't seen it. So great. Yo. You haven't seen Wreck-It Ralph? Also, Bloodfest, yeah. now available on Showtime. <laughs> hey. Hey. And on, uh, no, that's, I'm thinking of day five. In the U.S., yeah. probably. Yeah, the other and show. I'd always say that. Are we allowed to say that it's going to be on our show? I don't know. If we can say what we okay. can say or what we can't say. Uh, uh, changing subjects really quick. Biggest letdown, The Predator. Holy oh. shit. Oh, is that reality? I wanted to cry. Yeah. But not like I did in Paddington, because it was so fucking bad. But the uh, soundtrack's pretty dope, and I've been working out to Go it. Ahead. So thank you, Alan Silvestri and the other guy. Uh, did you, oh, Quiet out. Place was this year. Damn, a lot of good stuff. Quiet Place was cleared good. fifty-one but million dollars. What Predator? Yeah. How many screens? Uh, number. It opened at four thousand thirty-seven theaters. Yeah, it's a lot. That's a, that's a that's a commitment to that movie that they're mm-hmm. putting out there. So yeah, fifty-one million dollars domestically on an eighty-eight million dollar production budget. But Not how good. do you fuck up the Predator? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. How do you fuck up a predator? Put on mud. Black Panther was good. Yeah. Solo was, was fine. All right, we need to go through and list every movie. Yeah. You were talking before about uh, uh, the cost of doing Twitch streams, mm-hmm. right? And uh, just like you don't realize what it costs. Like you need a good computer and you need a good internet connection and games and all that stuff. But I think really a lot of stuff gets built in as costs that people already have. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people can do it. It's the time, I think, that eats up the most. One of the things we've always tried to do is try to figure out like what was the budget for Red versus Blue? Because mm. essentially the true budget for Red versus Blue season one was buying an extra copy of Halo. Well, that was also, like 50 bucks. We had to buy time. an extra Xbox. No, because I had two Xboxes. Oh, you did? Okay. I, I yeah. already had two Xboxes. So creepy. And so it was like I just didn't have two copies of Halo because I just go back and forth whenever I, I mm-hmm. used it. But it was in different places. It was before it, everything was disc. It wasn't right. digital back then. So I had one upstairs and one downstairs at that point in time. And uh, yeah, I bought a I bought a copy of Halo. So it's fifty bucks. Which if if that's like the budget of Red versus Blue is fifty bucks. Maybe an extra controller. It's easily maybe. So like you get up to a hundred bucks or whatever. But it's yeah. like that would make it easily the most successful or profitable compared to its budget movie or production. Yeah, got to be ever right because it's something that was. 50 bucks and it's going on to make tens of millions of dollars. Yeah, because all the other stuff was reused. Uh, you already had the capture card. We used that shitty Commodore 64 uh, display. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, that was the monitor. That was the n- TV monitor. We ran through that VCR for S video. He's out. <laughs> Didn't. <laughs> it's like slowly, like, well, there he goes. What's the one? I think it was actually made around here uh, okay. with the time travel. Oh, you're talking about Prime? Primer? Yeah. That, that was, was made, made like fucking that was 7K. Uh, 7K. $7,000. Wow. Rodriguez made a. Uh, for me, like 10K. I don't know. Rodriguez mm. made El Mariachi for seven thousand dollars, which launched his entire career, and now he's making like hundred and if you believe what you hear, like Alita cost a hundred and eighty million dollars to mm. make. Damn that movie. That's a that's an interesting movie to watch. That is going through a lot of refinement, and it gets better every time I see it. Yeah. Every time they put out anything new for that, it gets better and better. I'm I was really getting really, excited about it. I was it. really wary at the first teaser. Why wouldn't you be? It's anime to live action. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I, I really had a lot of doubts. But the more I've seen of it, the the more interested I am. And it's coming out. I said I, anime to live action. It probably is manga. Is manga, that what yeah. the is that what Alita was? Yeah. The manga? Yeah. I forget what movie I went to. I, I went and uh, I saw something with Esther, and we were watching. Uh, we sat down, started playing the trailers, and the Alita Battle Angel trailer came on. And after the trailer was done, Esther just leaned over and went. That movie looks fucking crazy. <laughs> like <laughs> it's, it's the action like, in it looks nuts. Yeah. yeah. Does she usually have that kind of reaction? No. Things? Yeah, she seems a little more. Yeah. So it's it's like uh, that's like that's I think that's like a that's, good sign for it. Yeah. That's really it's really coming along. Did you I, see In Ring, the Jinro live action? Adaptation? I still haven't seen it. We just talked about this the other day. No. <sighs> it's I a need to. Movie. <laughs> yeah. It's on Netflix. I feel like I need to keep up with movies in order to continue to be on this podcast. Movies and TV shows. No, oh, you just need to work for Napa. To, only one TV <laughs> show you should be watching right now. The barber, it's like tailor made for you. We're talking oh, about period pieces. Glow earlier. season two. Ash, you want to weigh in on this? Not already. I was going to be with you, but no, Glow season two. Yeah. Oh, Glow season two is amazing. Yeah. Glow, yeah. Uh, the entire series is great. Yeah. Yeah. But the marvelous Miss Maisel on Amazon is also real good. Fucking great. Did you like Gilmore Girls? 
I didn't all? watch Gilmore Girls. I didn't know it was made by the same lady who made Gilmore Girls. Oh, that actually explains a lot. Yeah. yeah. It is? That's what somebody really? told me today. I know they I, have I, a lot of like fast-paced talking in Gilmore Girls. Yeah, yeah it's, a lot it's, of quick banter. Same thing, like Super the quick. must be crazy long. Yeah. They must write for, like for an, an average movie or screenplay, it's usually like one page per minute. They must write two or three pages per minute because there's so much dialogue, overlapping dialogue, and it's just like, it's so rapid fire. Yeah, every single person who watches that show has messaged me saying yeah. you would like the show. Well, it's about this uh, girl from a Jewish family who's getting into entertainment in a time when she shouldn't and like taking risks and doing comedy. So it just seems like you would love it, you yeah. know? It's just, it's great. And I'm it's a like, Jewish girl from a family and uh, shouldn't be getting into entertainment, but here I am. <laughs> but you are in comedy. <laughs> you can relate. But uh, it's, a, it's a period. It's like 19, late 50s uh, New York City. So yep. that's what I was thinking about when I was talking about the brownstones. It's like I was watching a scene where they just got a bunch of '50s cars, like not a bunch really, like six of them, parked them on a the street, and suddenly it looks like it's 1950. I'm Mush. Mush is just hanging out. Uh, I'm gonna read this. Uh, I want to remind everyone: this episode of Receive Podcast is also brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. I love the Dollar Shave Club has everything I need to look, feel, and smell my best. What I love even more is the fact I never have to go to a store. And that's because Dollar Shave Club delivers everything I need right to my door, and they keep me fully stocked on what I use so that I don't run out. Dollar Shave Club has everything you need to get ready, no matter what you're getting ready for. They've got you covered head to toe for your hair, skin, your face, you name it, they have it. Uh, now they have a new program where they automatically keep you stocked up on the products you love to use. Uh, so that's what I do for a Dollar Shave Club shampoo. I've got it set up to be automatically sent to me every month. Never run out. Always have a bottle waiting. Uh, sage and black pepper scent actually smells so good. And uh, right now they've got a bunch of starter sets you can try for just $5, like their shower starter set, which includes shampoo. Uh, after that, the restock box ships regular sized products at regular price. So what are you waiting for? You can get your starter set for just $5 right now at dollarshaveclub.com slash roosterteeth. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash roosterteeth. Thanks, Dollar Shave Club. For sponsoring Thanks. this episode of the Rooster Teeth podcast, but sage and black pepper. Yeah, delicious. Huh. Well, I, I would never pick black pepper as a scent for something. That sounds mm. interesting. Bring it in. It's I'm like a sniff. Can I sniff thing. it? Can I sniff you? I'll give you a sniff. We yeah. Uh, I probably don't have it. I probably don't sniff. I probably don't <laughs> smell like it very much anymore. Sniff. Earlier, uh, I got to catch you in the morning. First thing in the morning, catch yeah. you in the AM and give you a good sniff. Remember, you walked into my office earlier. And he walks in and goes, oh, it smells weird in here. I was like, what? What the fuck? <laughs> what a <laughs> nice thing to say about then he goes, no, I was the guest, too. Then he goes, no, I mean, it smells like electronics. And you've been in my office. I was like, yeah. Mm. What, el what else <laughs> is like in there? There's like a million there? computers in here. I just yeah. meant it smelled like something was going wrong. Like I smelled that ozone smell mm. of like something burning out. Maybe mm. you're having a stroke. Maybe I am. And I just hit as soon as I walked in, <laughs> Gus's door. I, I like, yeah. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> well, how'd you, guys, uh, how'd you guys like doing the uh, live show? Oh, I dude, it was lot. awesome. That was a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I think early on in the discussions for it, I was very trepidatious. I was very skeptical as well. Yeah. I was very skeptical just because, like, we'd never done anything quite like that. And it was a mix between trying to get the sketches right for a live show, but also, like, working with broadcast to make sure everything was fully functional and, and seamless. Move the sets out. And, and like, broadcast yeah. fucking killed it. Yeah. Uh, they did I, such I, a good some, job. I have no idea how you guys pulled that off. Yeah. Shout um, out to you guys. But... I, you guys I can clap for yourself. Yeah, there yeah, we go. Broadcast. Thank you. But it was cool, <laughs> Eric. It was actually um. You, you weren't involved, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> that was from all of us. Yeah. <laughs> that was um, the royal we. Thank you. But uh, a couple of years ago, I wrote an episode of Red versus Blue. But I wrote a sketch also for this holiday um, extravaganza. It was really but, funny. Thanks, man. I wrote the uh, Blood Goblin one, and uh, before that, I guess I had never really written anything for Rooster Teeth. Yeah. So this is like my first. Oh, live awesome. live was, action. It was really, it was, it was really, really funny. And when you know, we read it. You know, we all had the meeting a couple months ago, I guess. And yeah. We went over all the scripts and read it. I thought it was hilarious. And then uh, having Christina I play that, say, that part. Maybe, really if there. everyone could have Christina read dialogue in their first sketch, yeah, that that helps a ton. Dude. <laughs> She's so fucking funny. It's a good sketch, man. That's just like holiday content. Like it doing that, and then doing our usual holiday short, and then like I did some MDB Christmas stuff. It just like gets you in gear for the holidays, and we're just like yeah. fucking ready for you it. You were you were and, fucking awesome and in we, that sketch too. Uh, yeah, the, the Shepherd Wiseman. The, the Shepherd Wiseman thing. I, I, it was you know we worked on it again. You know worked on all these. Skits for for several weeks, but uh, I think I tweeted about this the other day. Like the the dab that Shepard Wiseman does was added, like I think in the last rehearsal. Yeah, yeah. we had this like yeah. really low energy one where it was just for broadcast sake, where we we're gonna do lighting and, and angles, and we're just going around just like fucking around, like we're just like saying our dialogue stupid and just making each other giggle, and then like I think I did like the 
the flossing, flossing, flossing and then a, a dab, at, like, and everyone's like, do that during the thing. It was, like, it was mm. really funny. Also, like, the cut to you doing that was so perfectly timed. It, it was funny because you, you, you told yeah. Mariel, like, you need to vamp a little bit. Buy me a couple seconds. I need to warm up the flossing. I gotta get going. <laughs> I remember how to do yeah, it. Yeah, it was supposed to like cut from her right to me, but I couldn't like. I was like, how do I? He took a couple of uh, <laughs> rotations before he got it nailed. Yeah. yeah. So let me ask you this: during your sketch, because I didn't, I was backstage like shaving as fast as I could. By the way, that was a huge mistake. I'm, I'm regretting that now. Did Not just because I have this thing on my face, <laughs> Why? but because <laughs> I shaved in my office. And I put down a towel, and I had the trash can right under me. Doesn't matter. It looks like a werewolf exploded. <laughs> in my so fucking gross. Oh my god! Mush. You should just get a vacuum going. Also, oh, that's mush, the mush. cutest He's thing out. ever. He's so out. His what a eyes mood. Are shut. What a fucking mood. This man. is just what he does, man. He just like he's got this mode where he just like racks out and I feel just like sleeps. That is the depiction of 2018. <laughs> I love it. Uh. <laughs> but uh, did you during the uh, your sketch? Mm. Uh, did you say what did you say to baby Jesus when he says he's the healer? He's so oh, yeah. I said something like oh great uh, healer. Oh, I've great got a healer. rash on my ding dong. I've got a rash on my ding. Did you say ding dong during the live performance? He did. Yeah. That I was my favorite. Because you said ball sack a couple times, and I was like, I really hope he says, ding dong. I got a wicked rash on my ding dong. <laughs> I laughed every time you said that. <laughs> in the I think you said ding dong. My favorite. It's such an underrated moment in that sketch. But right at the end, after Blaine's already knocked out, and Max is baby Jesus is talking, and he goes. Mom, give me a beer. <laughs> Meryl makes me laugh every time she does it. She goes, you got it. And she like leans down to prick up a beer. Yeah, I, think what, I think what you went with in the final live version was, Mom, beer me. Beer me. <laughs> yeah. We did uh, rap drinks that night, and it was like a cold front oh, God. What the in. fuck were y'all doing? I, I couldn't go because I had to get ready for the all-hands meeting the very next day. Uh -huh. You guys are like in this outdoor patio at 30 degrees. It's because, it yeah, awful. people suggested we go to the, there's like a, a bar that we like that just opened up a new location closer to us. And, uh. There, like, it was packed because it recently opened, so everyone's going there. Oh, but the really? entire inside area was completely full. But they had like huge open seating benches outside, and we're like, I guess we'll sit outside because we're like thirty people. Yeah. Um, but it was fucking cold. It wasn't only cold; it was windy. I, yeah. I went there the other day to that place you're talking about. Yeah. And there was a dog birthday party going on Whoa. out the patio. Oh, yeah. With a dog birthday party. And I was like, this is awesome. There are dogs everywhere, just like Do all running around. Dog birthday party, buddy. <laughs> I did feel good though because I like store coats and cold equipment stuff in my car. <laughs> so I showed up with like this bag full of coats and everyone's like, huh. and I was like, here, here, you take, take my coats. Coat. And just like, You're like I got gloves too. Yeah, I was just scarf. getting out coats and gloves and I felt, I felt very, I, like, I know this. Yeah, it was a, definitely you were in the uh, holiday spirit that night. Yeah, it was yeah. very giving. Yeah. It, was, it was just a good night. It was just like happy from the production going and yeah, I think yeah. a lot so, of us were relieved that it was. It was successful and yeah. over. <laughs> Someone reminded me about something. They said here in the chat that the production was sponsored by beer. Yeah. Yeah. And that was like uh, an ongoing joke because early on we talked about like maybe getting a sponsor we for it. We actually did. And we, we were well, like, that's what that would yeah. spurred the whole idea right. of doing the live show. We were show. in early talks with a, a brewery and they were going to potentially sponsor it. And we we're like, oh, well, we'll just write it generically. And then, of course, that deal didn't come through. Yeah. It was a lot of deals that fall through. And then for we just wrote reason. that into the show. We're like, oh, let's just have it be a bit. Let's have it be a joke in the show where the whole show is brought to you by beer. 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 And then, yep. like, even in the beginning when Matt and Josh were talking, like, no, 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 that sponsor pulled out. Like, that's, you know. Man, Pretty much what happened. To Josh for being in his fucking diaper the whole show. Well, he also like everybody stepped it up a little for the live performance. Yeah, like there was all of us kind of held back something. Oh, like I obviously couldn't shave during every rehearsal, yeah. so I, I know waited exactly to do that. What you're about to and then to. Josh, like right before he went on, pulled that diaper straight up his ass, and it was like <laughs> when he did that turnaround. And wow. We were watching it over here in like the changing room. Yeah. And uh, we had a monitor, and everyone in the changing room gasped. Everyone, yeah. went, oh. <laughs> because he does the thing where he, he, like, after they start fighting, he turns around and leans over, like he's trying to gasp for air. And I guess in between the scuffle, he hiked it up even more to make almost like a thong mm -hmm. with his ass. And then he did the lean over, and all of us backstage were like, "Oh, oh. Jesus Christ!" <laughs> Matt was just like covering up. Yeah, no pun intended. Oh man. Yeah, the uh, the the Warm Christmas is now out on the YouTube channel and on Roosterteeth.com, right? Yeah. So we did it live, and then the next day was up on Rushit.com, and then after that it went to uh, YouTube. I thought you want anybody want to hold a cat for yep, a little bit? He's, he's I want to hold a cat. You want to hold him? Yeah. Still hold the I cat. Hold a mush. He's he pretty good mush. about letting you transfer between them. We'll see. You have a set of cans. Be nice. It's okay, buddy. Kitty. Gonna... Yeah. Let me get leash free. There you go. <gasps> cat. cat hair off me. There is an. I, I meant to ask I this already, when, when we were uh, when you were doing the the tongue thing. 
we had a poll ready for that. I meant to to ask the the viewers if they if they would lick their own cat. Oh, with the tongue. I, I don't think he liked it. He's so a if you go to roosterteeth.com slash play, if you're watching product, live. Oh, maybe can, it does can, help you bond with your cat. You can vote if you would lick your cat. I just want to set Mush's expectations correctly for the rest of our time together. Like, I don't want him to think I'm going to be doing that on a regular basis. He gets, yeah. he gets rubs. He gets food. He gets to be held. Do you give him fleas? What's going on over there? He's scratching away. He's licking. That he's licking? That's the prelude to the bite, man. Bite's it? coming. No, no. He put his oh, chin on it. That was sweet. Done. He licked your hand and then put his chin down on it. You had to clean it. Oh, that's the cutest shit. He's going to burn a hole in his oh, wow. uh, It's going to burn a hole in his, in his tongue. Going back oh, more people are bit. voting that they would than I thought. Okay, no, here we go. No, no, no. Yeah, it's that's a lot of people would do forth. it. They'd lick their cat. Well, if you've <laughs> ever wanted to lick your cat, now you can. You can use... <laughs> what is that thing called? Licky brush. Licky? Licky brush. Licky. They're not, just like Bernie said, they're not a sponsor. We, we've talked about this for a long Dude, time. Dude, the lady does not have the rubber guard in her mouth. That's what on I was trying thing. to tell you. Of course we knew that was wrong. We had to make him use it the stupid way. I felt like I was getting a root canal. It was like, <laughs> like mouth guard. X-rays Mush, through the... Yeah. Mush is like a little heater. He is, and he purrs. <gasps> he is oh my God, so wait. hot. Sophie, come here. Oh. Oh Damn. my god. Damn. What is Arthur's going on? Here. We got like a petting zoo going on. <laughs> I want him. The, what's, what's the dog's name? Arthur. Arthur. Arthur, Arthur. Arthur Morgan. Arthur. Sophie. I don't know what he's going to do if he sees the cat. Does he bark or what's him. the problem? He's a good boy. He'll be fine. He He's my favy. He might pee on me, but that's okay. Oh, by the way, also, Hi, Mush Andy. might see him and come running. Come here. So he, far, he so likes good. To play. I think these are just a couple of tired ass animals. Yeah, they're sweet. This is Arthur. We discovered the secret to that podcast is a cute success. Cute little pooch, man. Hi, hey, Bubba. Cats and dogs living and together. So Arthur is oh, so Arthur is a miniature Australian Shepherd, correct? Mm -hmm. Oh, that a and wow. he is four months old right now. Beep, 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 nope, beep, 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 Mush is just settling in. Mm -hmm. oh. He just curled he back up. Pulled my hand closer so he could put his head on it. He's a right cat, into dude. my mouth. Ashley and I, we've been super happy about Mush. He's like immediately <laughs> paid off, right, Ash? I mean. Uh, Instagram gold. Like. Oh no! Yeah, he definitely. <laughs> we definitely uh, like putting him on Instagram because he gets tons of likes. Arthur's then. got his own little Instagram account. Does he? Does he? Sophie's yeah. good about that. What is it again? It's uh, Arthur the little dog. Arthur the little dog. Following. He's the cutest bit. Oh, right on the mouth. He's a good boy. So he's four months old. So he probably won't go to a whole heck of a lot bigger, right? <laughs> no. Like he's. We get a get, get a good sense of him being a small dog at this point. We well, said the other dog. He's cute. Uh, is uh, Arthur's brother right? A uh, sister. Sister. Uh, oh, and that yeah. other the dog's about uh, that size. I yeah. associate uh, most Australian Shepherds as being like what I call blue dogs. Mm, you mm -hmm. know, like they're yeah, like yeah. gray with black and they look like have a bluish tint to them. Yeah. Arthur is, he almost looks calico, right? He's got the yeah. black and brown and white. Yeah. He's a good looking pooch. Man. He looks like a tiny Burmese mountain dog. <laughs> okay. Did somebody say that already? No, I don't think okay, so. Okay. Sometimes I zone He's out when there's a cute Here's like the difference dogs and cats though. Like, like Arthur's like, he wants to see everything and smell everything, and Mush is just like, I want to sleep. Eyes closed. He's out. Done. The I think Arthur's noticed him, but he is fine. Does anyone else have any other animals they can get for the me and Barb? Well, okay. I is, feel like. Is, is Iris around? Do you want to bring a baby yeah. back out again? Let's get a human animal. I, Iris, Michael and Lindsay's daughter, and Mush were just like, that was so great. She's so freaking cute. Iris, Iris she's so cute. She's so cool. They're about to make another one of those. I know. I know. What? It's great. Bye, Arthur. I, What's up, Arthur? Hi. I'm. I'm do you want to say hi to Arthur? I got him. Do you want to say hi to Arthur? Hi, Arthur. Okay. Is, is it Arthur Morgan? Hey, Sophie. What's a movie people should go watch from 2018 that they haven't seen yet? Ooh. Um. If you say the Predator, I'm gonna slap that dog out of your hand. I know she wants to say the Predator. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see Spider Man on Wednesday. I'm excited for that. It's good. You're gonna like it. Oh yeah. I was gonna see it on Wednesday too, but I have to pre-record the podcast that day. You're gonna see it in the middle of the day? Yeah, we were gonna go. That was gonna be our like oh. marketing end of year. All right, let's uh, we can reschedule it. Dig it a little bit, here. <laughs> right, Eric? <laughs> let's, let's, let's dig into uh, uh, Bar's Oh my God, look at this here. face. So Trevor, oh, he's out. He's upside <gasps> down now. Bush. Like his eye is partially open, but he's totally asleep. I'll tell you, man. That he's like a kindred spirit with see if I can... Joe the cat. He, he just doesn't give a shit. So and get a photo. So cute. Some guys listen to the audio podcast and be like, God, God damn, damn it. it. All this cute shit. Yeah. I saw on social media. Yes. Bernie. Trevor went to see Spider-Verse. He did. And you didn't go. So what yes. went wrong? Um, Are so you in he, trouble? He did get us. Okay? He got me and him tickets. Okay. Um, But when he got tickets, it was for the night after our Christmas special. 
And the I, same night or the, the same night? night. Okay. That's, it was at 7.30 that night. Got it. And we wrapped here at 7. And I said, I would love to see the movie, but just giving you a heads up, if people go out for drinks or something after to celebrate, I'm going to prioritize that because, you know, camaraderie and, and working on this together, and I'm going to want to hang out with everybody. Yeah. So, like, I was like, boys. you get me the ticket, and if I can't go, I'll let you know as soon as possible so you can give it to someone else. Okay. So, because I didn't want to stop him from going to see the movie All right. with everybody. Yeah. With everybody? Who'd you go with? Some other team, 100 people. I oh, think. yeah? Yeah. Fredo? Fredo, Jackie, um, I think Jeff? Like that Fredo. He's a good dude. Good dude. Andy yeah. Blanchard? I don't know. I usually, I don't ask. He's a movie guy. So. No, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's a big movie guy. But I was, he, he was raving about it, though, so he might go again with me. Like a good boy. Oh, yeah, you could have, it's definitely a movie yeah. you could see twice. I might go tomorrow. For sure. Ninety million no, dollars they spent on that movie. I definitely mm -hmm. like whenever we put on a big production like that. It's always nice to go out and celebrate after with everybody. Yeah, it's a good feeling. It's one of those movies that it's I enjoyed thoroughly, but I don't know that I would recommend it to anybody just because it's like I could see some people walking out. Of that. If somebody walked out of that movie and said that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen, I'd go okay, I get I get why you think that. You know, Spider Verse. Because there's some people who just like won't want the comic book aesthetic and like the. I feel like those aren't people we really. Associate with much though. No, I'm well. You're saying like the people, I mean, <laughs> people that would get my recommendation. You're saying, I, yeah, because yeah. I like I, again. I mentioned everybody on my Twitter timeline was raving about it. Oh, that's the pool because of people like I could recommend a movie to. It tends to be the people that we associate yeah. with, people who we work with or in the industry. <laughs> what are you doing over there? Oh, look at that. There's your photo. Yeah, look. His eyes just partially open. Look at this. He's out. Cut back to Gus. Look. <laughs> that's like, where he's alive. Look, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> He's not moving it. <laughs> Is he purring at least? No? No, he's just out. He's just awesome. He's just he's like, he tired. just racks out and then he'll be, but he'll wake up in five minutes and he'll just be a terror. And he'll be back. all over everything. Oh, What's that? Go. Oh, oh my Ash, God. you want to take him? Sure. Oh, Ashley's going to come and grab him. Hi, Mush. You're a cutie. Ashley, thank you for bringing Mush in to come visit us. Oh, long leash. I went to a party recently with I love Chris. You both. This isn't related to anything. Oh, um, but they had uh, they had cookies out on a table, and you were there. It was like Stephanie's house. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. There was like a couple. And you were there, and you were there. You were a tin man. Yeah. Uh, was wait, what was that? What's good? Talk about like these cookies. What's well, so there was it was a, a friends was having a housewarming party, and then like also like Paulo's birthday thing. So where there was like all these parties going on this one there night. There was a weekend where there was a lot of. Events. Yeah. Yeah. And I had been like, man. yeah, yeah. And I had been like, you know, had a couple of beers and stuff like that, but I was like getting hungry and they had like cookies on the snack table, but I don't like eating cookies dry. So I just asked one of the people that lived in the house, I was like, do you have milk? <laughs> and she was like, yeah. What and I was like, at a party, I was like, milk. you got cookies. I'm gonna grab some milk from your fridge. I'll Venmo you because I know it's like I'm gonna drink a lot. I'll Venmo it fifty cents. And she was like, okay, like she was just really confused by it. But I just was just eating milk and cookies in the middle of this party, and people were like, "The fuck is that guy doing? So what you're Are you drunk? That? Yeah, a little bit. Nothing goes great as good with alcohol as milk does. I know, right? It's like when I get wasted, I just want some milk. I had a great time in the milk and cookies. I'm Holland with juice. you though. Like I don't like eat eating cookies without milk. Right. Yeah. And I was also just feeling like. I didn't give a shit, so just eating <laughs> milk and cookies. I got another guy to do it with me, and he was he was like, "This is a great idea." And Bad like, influence. Yeah. So milk fiend, dude. Ashley and my oldest son JD milk? love get no, they love getting. It's very specific thing. It's this sheet of Toll House cookie dough, but it's not the tube. You know, it usually comes in the tube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it, this is a sheet of it, and it's got little squares. You like can break thing. them off in bricks and eat them. Yeah, it's just. I hate when they get it because it's like I'm just so tempted to eat it. And usually, if I'm not paying attention, I'll eat literally half of it. Which, when you're eating them as raw cookie dough chunks, you're like, "Oh, this goes down it's like chomp chomp." It's gone. Whole it's a whole cookie, though, <laughs> yeah. Barb. It's an entire cookie that's like condensed down in this little thing. It's no it's air in fucking it. Fucking amazing. But don't get. Do you have worms, Ashley? Do you have worms? Did you get worms, Ashley? Not to my knowledge. <laughs> also, though, I've upgraded to the tube. Okay. All right. Oh, wait. you got the tube. Yeah, you did. Your oh, last yeah. go, you did get the tube. No, I mean it by the tube. Now I'm a wreck of a human. What's is it dough? There's like something like unpasteurized eggs in there that you could. It's eat. eggs. It's it's raw eggs. It's raw. Okay. That yeah. could do it. I watched Rocky one time when I was younger. And it was like earlier in my fitness journey, and I just started eating eggs raw. Fitness cause it was like, journey by like, When I was a lad, I ate four dozen eggs every morning to help me get large. Is this a Gaston song? 
Yeah, but I can't sing it. Oh, yeah, you can't. <laughs> and now that I'm grown, I eat five dozen eggs. And guess how big I am? Roughly the size of a barge. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's on like slam poetry or something. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's poetry. Spoken like, word Disney. I like the amount of times he mentions antlers too in that song. I feel it on a spiritual level. Did you watch the uh Lion King? Live live action Beauty and the Beast when it came out? I uh, did. Was Gaston who's Gaston in that? Uh, uh he is not, I don't know the actor's name, but it's to me it wasn't a very He's not a Hemsworth, he's a he he Star was Starks? like definitely had like the cockiness down. Yeah, but I don't like to me whoever plays Gaston needs to be like fucking. Huge. He, he looks like evil Orlando Luke Bloom. Evans. That's yeah, the one. Evil Orlando Bloom's Bloom. Uh, yeah, one. he's like he he just he looks like a villain, but he's also a very handsome yeah. guy. There he is. Yeah, look at him go. Like he had the cockiness down, but look yeah. at that fucking chin. You could land a plane on that thing. <laughs> land a plane on the chin. Okay. That means so what? Flat? If I think he's hot. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it means, it means, yeah, so what? It means good casting. Yeah, it is. Well, mm, so you were talking about your fitness journey. What was it you think about, you learned from Rocky? Eat eggs? Oh, I was just, yeah, I was just going to, I was going to start cracking open eggs and just dumping that it. That was a big there. thing in the 70s. You drink a raw egg. Yeah. Like that was, that was a thing. Back, back, we always talk about this when food was, uh, was looked at differently. Yeah. The things that you needed to eat. They have like pasteurized egg whites, though. I love that I shit. I still remember the time Lindsay everything. made you eat or drink an egg. It was egg yolks. Egg yolk, yeah. It was like a glass of egg yolks. Did you hear about the like, story? Like egg yellows? Yeah. Just like the worst part? Well, I mean, it's not the worst part. She was remarkable. She's, so, she's such a good straight face. She must have felt remarkably safe in her position at this company. <laughs> I was very upset about having to drink that. She just handed it to me. She goes, I think she even said- You like, were sick like, that day. I was sick. She goes, you're feeling under the weather here. And she hands me this glass of orange stuff. She goes, I made this for you. And I said, really? She goes, yeah. And then I took a sip and I go, this is not orange juice. She goes, nah, it's all egg yolks. <laughs> <laughs> she had taken egg yolks and just blended them up and gave that to me in the office. It like, like orange juice, yeah. <laughs> It was like, I mean, I, it's weird. It was, it was just weird. It was weird, but, but like, really fucking funny. Lindsay is one of the best straight face people ever. Like, mm. she could be telling you such bullshit or doing something like that, pranking you, and you'll never know. Dude. I ever, ever, ever. Laying in bed the other day. Go on. Knowing... Yeah, you guys have to understand what this is like. Maybe not you, Blaine. But I was laying in bed doing that thing where I'm giving myself excuses why I didn't need to go to the gym and mm. I shouldn't go to the gym. And of course, since I'm laying in bed, I got my fucking phone and I'm scrolling. What do I hit? But Lindsay on Instagram working out at seven ass. months pregnant. And I'm like, I gotta, I gotta go to the fucking gym. Yeah. I mean, if she's working out at seven months pregnant, what excuse do I have for not getting my ass out of bed and going to working? Just listen to the Predator soundtrack and you'll, 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 you'll go to the gym. Or or uh, watch but the commando watch suit up scene. Oh, how many? How fuck many? Yeah, Eric. You know what I'm talking about. How many days a week are you in the gym? Uh, I go most times three days on, one day off, three days on, one day off. But sometimes I've been like doubling up. I'll just do like six days straight, and I'll take like. So one you or say two three days, days on. on. You work. You work out three days in a row. Yes. So oh. I'm it, like six, five to six times a week, and then the, then I'll like climb on rest days and stuff like that. So yeah. or I don't know. I don't know. It's a lot. Yeah, you were talking the other day about how you went to the gym and he was too tired to go into the gym, so he slept in his car. Yeah. And then to get ready to go to the gym, basically. So yeah, my Jeep is like really tiny, but I took a small nap and I have blankets back there and coats. Yeah, and well, yeah, cold weather stuff. This thing. Yeah, yeah. So huh. I just like bundled up back there. And then, uh, yeah, I took like a 12, 12 minute or and then got my butt in gear. Those are the worst workouts, too. I gave Gavin a very good gift. What did you give him? So I got, did I talk about this before? I got this thing, the bed jet, which is oh, like, yeah, it's a comforter yeah. that has like a fan that goes in it. Yeah, yeah. And then it like, it inflates it. So it's in the summer. It's you like still have that? cool. Yeah, I still have it. And then now in the winter, Ashley was like, this thing, blah, blah, blah. In the winter now, you just hit a button and fucking hot air goes in the bed. Whoa. And oh she's my so God, happy. I love that. But I got, I got this thing. <laughs> it was like, uh, it was like X amount for the single zone or whatever on one side. Mm -hmm. And then it was barely more. To get two zones, so I said, "Well, I'll get the I'll get the two zones because if Ashley likes it, then I'll be great." When it showed up, it was just two things. It was just two units, so you put one on one side and one on the other. <laughs> two so it's, zones. It's like two bed jets, is what it was. Yeah. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I said, I'm not gonna See, set up two of these things. I hate getting into bed when it's cold at night, like the initial getting in when the covers are cold. So 
Trevor does the sweetest thing in the world where if I get up to go to the bathroom or brush my teeth or he whatever, he grinds on the bed. Wait a minute. He, farts. he he rolls over onto my side and like lays in the covers and like wiggles around a little bit until I get back so my side's still warm by the time I get back. So then his the side's cold? Yeah. I do the same thing. Dude. <laughs> And the more I hear about the shit that Trevor does, the more I realize like how perfect he is for you, but also just like oh, like God. how shitty of a boyfriend everyone else in the world is. Yeah, I, like I just like but. I feel like a butt. Does he ever tuck his balls between his legs? <laughs> and show, turn around and show you from behind every night. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, Actually, we do this thing. You guys have been to. Uh, we go to. This, believe it or not, we probably said this before, but believe it or not, Austin has the best sushi restaurant I've ever eaten at in my life. It's a place called Uchi. So good. Eric, have you eaten at Uchi yet, you San Diego snob? Uh, no, I have not. You fucking prick. Um, <laughs> what? So you're probably hearing me say that Austin has this great sushi restaurant. You're probably in there rolling your eyes, right? Uh, no, sushi here is fine. It's okay. It's whatever. There you go. That's what he said. You could hear him rolling his eyes while he fucking said that. Sushi's fine. It's fine. It's fine. But uh, whenever Ashley gets out mm. and she gets out of the bed to go to the bathroom or something, like that, she comes back and it's always fucking, she's freezing. You can always tell. If you, if you touch somebody else... And they feel warm. That means you're fucking cold as shit. That's what that means. That means mm -hmm. you feel freezing to them. But she, I do this thing called hot rock, like from Uchi, where I just like grab her, like, <laughs> like that. So, <laughs> do, 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 do you sizzle? Sizzle. Okay. No, we don't make the sizzling. Like noise. the wagyu beef. Call it hot rock. He's a very good hot rock. Yeah. <laughs> Gross. I generate a lot of. I generate generate a lot of heat. Uh, I want to remind everyone that this episode of Chief Podcast is also brought to you by Ring. Ring's mission is to make neighborhoods safer. You might already know about their smart video doorbells and cameras that protect millions of people everywhere. Ring helps you stay connected to your home anywhere in the world. So if there's a package delivery or surprise visitor, you'll get an alert and be able to see, hear, and speak to them all, all from your phone. Uh, it's really great. Uh, you can, like as they said, you can talk. You get an alert on your app. You hit a button, and you can talk to the person, and they don't know whether you're there or not. I've used that many times. Uh, as a listener, you have a special offer on our Ring Starter Kit available right now with a video doorbell and motion-activated floodlight cam. The Starter Kit has everything you need to start building a ring of security around your home. Just go to ring.com slash teeth. That's ring.com slash teeth. The Ring Starter Kit can give you the peace of mind you need when you're away from your home. Protect yourself and your home with the Ring Starter Kit. Get it now at ring.com slash teeth. That's ring.com slash teeth. Super cool. You know me. I hate talking to people. So if I can talk to them through a microphone and camera, even better. And please leave. Yeah. Immediately. Leave it at the door. Go away. Go away. <laughs> the, uh... Sometimes they're confused. I, they're looking around. Oh, there's a... There's, there's, uh, a service we have in Austin, I'm assuming they got more places, they got Amazon Prime. So if, uh, it's called Amazon Prime now, we get something at your door within an hour. Like, oh shit, my mouse just broke, I need a new mouse. Mm. But I don't want to leave because I'm working on a project or writing something. So I'll just order a new mouse and it just shows up. <laughs> and it's really cool. But their default is they just leave it at the door, which is like the best default ever yeah. for anything, you know? is I, I can't tell you how many times it's like, Go and answer the door, and there's nobody there because somebody left a package and then rang the doorbell and then just left or something like that. We had to call like something had happened where there was a mix up, and we called Amazon Prime now to deliver an, a bathrobe to a set one time because we needed it for the shoot, and it just showed up like perfect timing. Like we need that thing in the bathroom, get it the actor in it, and then yeah, you know, wow, stuff. yeah. Did we I, order some stuff here from Amazon? We have in the past. Ashley though. and I did it on we, a long time ago. We did this. Was it? Do we do a Twitch stream on the Rushi Twitch account or something? Is it like wicked expensive? Uh, was that when you did Limbo? Yeah, I did Limbo. I was trying to get the uh, fi die only five times in Limbo achievement, and then I had to order a some kind of like a headset or something. I think we tried to get uh, some sort of splitter so you could have like uh, you could have the like the mic and the audio stuff so, like some way to get the. Audio into the stream properly because oh, because right. the audio had to go to the stream and I couldn't hear it. Yeah, so it had to play without sound. So yeah, so by the end of the stream, we while we're playing the game, like less than an hour, it's like the thing I ordered like on the stream showed up. How much wow. is Prime now? Fucking like crazy for like just a delivery thing. I think it's like if you order a certain amount and you have Prime, uh -huh. it's not that much, but I think it's like six ninety five if you just order like one thing. That's seven dollars for. Me having like just if you to can't stay leave, home. especially if you can't leave and go somewhere, like yeah. if you're in a movie set, right? Yeah, and you can't leave, you gotta or be there. Or if it's cold out or raining, yeah, yeah exactly. So, I was realizing the other day, I think it was actually like it might have been in Japan, where I was in this like super like neon lit street, and I was like on my iPhone and I put it away, and then a, a an electric car zipped by and it made that like noise yeah. and was like. Oh, I'm in the future. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's weird. Like, I can talk to my lights and they can turn my shit on and off. Like, 
this is, this is the future. When did that happen? We yeah. just jumped in. Maybe. I thought it'd be like way more. No, it slowly like, happens. It creeps on you. you yeah. That one cool thing and another cool thing. Yep. And, and then you just... look up and you've got a smartphone and a smartwatch and like I'm talking to Ashley on my watch and stuff like that. It's, it's like just Tracy. Tracy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's actually why I'm holding out on getting an Apple Watch because I wanted to have a camera like Dick Tracy's watch. A camera? Yeah. It would be cool if this thing had Face ID, but it's not worth having the camera on here. I don't need another camera. Well, I mean, it already off. knows. Like, if it if you take it off your wrist, it locks. You got to put a passcode in to unlock it. Is it, it. worth it, the Apple Watch? Huh? Is it worth it? Watch this. Watch this. Um, I know you guys both have it. Hey, Ash, how's Moose doing? Over. The first time you connect, it takes a little while, doesn't it? Just, yeah, it takes a little while to connect the first time. But like we're in a grocery store, we're just like walking around like, where That's are you? Great. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Yeah. So they tried to. The only problem is. Oh, go, go. Could you stop interrupting me? Stop interrupting me. Whoa. Oh, oh, oh. You guys haven't seen that before? <laughs> no. Yeah, it's the walkie talkie feature on the Apple Watch. They used to do that with old phones. I can't remember who the did that. Yeah. Like that's oh, yeah, it. The Nextel. Yeah. Push to talk. It's a yeah. dangerous function to have. Yeah. Because I feel like it could come at a really not or opportune you can, time. Or you could make, make yourself noises. unavailable. Uh, she, oh, okay. she actually did that once to me during a meeting. She's like, what's up, bud? And I was like, <laughs> yeah. yay! <laughs> That's pretty cool. Did you see, the, speaking of making fart noises, go on. Yes, sir. Speaking of <laughs> making <laughs> fart noises. I get frustrated with the shit that Tesla does sometimes. They added a farting Easter egg to the car. No. Why would they do that? That's pretty great. Where you can like set one. I heard one, about this. Yeah, it just started rolling out. Where you can set one of the seats to be like a whoopee cushion. Oh my God. And the next time someone sits in it, it makes like a, a farting noise. Why from haven't you used Or like the, I think the audio plays from like that side. <laughs> wherever that seat is. Way to go, Elon. Genius. You did it. It was like, fix the fucking car. <laughs> how about. What's wrong with it? <laughs> how about you, you, you make this like this morning? I couldn't unplug my car from the power. How about oh, you? Oh, yeah, I think where you like hit the button and it turns white. It, but it turned. You... It turned red. Oh, that's not good. Yeesh. Yeah, I had to like. I had to find a YouTube video telling me how to do a manual release on it. Uh huh. Yeah, I had a couple problems with mine uh, when I first got it. The the I, I, I the one I have now is actually I traded in my old one and got this one. And the first one, it, it had issues. Like, remember, I couldn't open the trunk on it, and mm. I had to like get a manual release for the cable to do it. And I was like, mm. I felt kind of weird about that. Like, yeah. you know, it's like, but you got to realize, you know, you're. Beta testing for a lot of people in the future, my it's friend. It's very true. I think uh, I drove Carrie's car the other day for the first time. Carrie got one. Yeah. And uh, isn't it the same? The same one as Jordan's, isn't it? No, it's not. It, it looks the same from the outside, but it's different. How are oh, they're they already di different. Aren't they just all Tesla? Oh, welcome to that they're, world. They're dude. different. They're uh, like fucking iPhones, how man. Do, how does it, you how get does a car, it? and then a year later, they have a better version. But of your I, car. I looked at like his VIN, right? And the, I think the VIN I have is like mine was like the twenty thousandth Model Three built, and his was already like the hundred twenty fifth thousandth. Wow! Uh, it's yeah. like they've really started cranking those things out. And I realized, by the way, before anybody points it out, that yes, they update cars every year already, but it's remarkably they, different. It's like if almost like every year if they change the body style on a car. Yeah, they, and it's not yeah. even every year. It's like they're just constantly iterating it. Yeah. Like, oh, that's like even looking at his, I was like, oh, that's different than mine. This is different than mine. Like this, like in the, a better way. Yeah, it's like oh yeah, oh, yeah. I would I would much rather have. Well, that. the other thing too is like I, I live in a world now where it's like I get all these updates because the software for the car updates like an operating system. And then it tells you all the features, and it's like, oh, but that's not on my car because I don't have that hardware. Like, I can't do that. Oh, I can't do uh, that. Fuck this. So it's like this bummer. constant, like, guess what it would be cool if you could do? <laughs> <laughs> Matt, I pulled up to Matt in the parking lot because he just got one, too. And I was like, ah, oh, it's a nice car, Matt. And we're just kind of got talking about it. And he's like, you know, they're making electric, like, SUV, like, Jeep-looking things. And oh. I was like, oh, that's cool. You love your Jeep. I love my Jeep. Yeah. So it would be Do you wave to Adam to Baird in your Jeeps? Of course. Do you? Oh, yeah. is it the, Do the Jeep wave? Do the Jeep wave. Um, Why is it that? Oh, it's just because like, you keep your hand on the steering wheel, so you just do, like, a little peace sign. Hmm. Was it you or Adam who was saying that they waved to a uh, parked Jeep accident? Yeah. Like, no, <laughs> no driver would, in there. I'd probably do that. It, it's <laughs> weird because, like, I read a thread and someone was talking about, like, Toyota Tacomas versus Jeep Wranglers. And how they have these two like very strong cultures, but like Jeep people are kind of unbearable. They're like rice <laughs> burner dudes, like car guys that upgrade their cars, put like shit spoilers on them and stuff like that. I don't think I'm that bad though. Not yet. Not yet. So I like my Jeep though. It was, it was fun. It almost exploded the other day while you guys were complaining about not getting Wi-Fi in your Teslas. <laughs> can you take the uh, Can you take the top off? And take the doors off of it. I all can. Right? Yeah. That's so I cool. take my doors off all the time. Do you? Yeah. That's really cool. Not the top though. But yeah, I've had the same car since I moved here, and it's lasted. It's still in oh, great, yeah. great shape. Dude, it still looks good. That's too. fucking yeah. crazy. So I was thinking I about this. My pickup that I have, uh, my old Ford that I had before I got these sedans, these, these cars. Uh, I've had that since two thousand and 
10? Yeah, 2010. JD's gonna, it's gonna be the car that JD drives. It's eight years old at this point. Oh, the silver one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It looks brand fucking new. It, like, I get in it, it, it drives, it's great, everything about it is amazing. I had a car, it was a 1982 Datsun, and I got it in 1988. That thing was like, I pulled it out of the fucking junkyard. It's just like, <laughs> cars last so much longer now yeah. than they used to. Like an eight or ten year old car before was a rusted out piece mm -hmm. of junk falling yeah. apart would stop at every stoplight and the engine would die. It's also crazy how much longer cars last and look good in warm places. Like I'm That's used true. to, yeah. like That's back true. in Canada because of the salt and the snow and everything like that, yeah. It, yeah. cars would look fucking busted yeah. after my, like two years. Yeah, my Prius, you know, which I had right before the Tesla was eight years old. Wow. And it's like, I. I don't. I never thought of that car as being. I I old saw you or in your car the other day and wondered what happened to your Prius, yeah. and I assume you just traded it in. Yeah, yeah, sold it. yeah. But uh, yeah, people who live in the South are mm. like, they when you talk about like a, a place like a rust place, they don't. There's no rust businesses, yeah. you know. And those are like regular commercials you see living in the North or anywhere with salt on the roads. Yeah. Yep, is like Rusty Jones or I don't know what some of the other. <laughs> I, it's been a long. <laughs> it's been a long time since I lived <laughs> in in the Northern climate, but I remember that growing up as a kid and seeing that it was like regular services for rust fixing. Then like tire chains. Or, or putting or putting like winter tires on. Yeah, and stuff that's like a that. pretty yeah. foreign idea to I think Texans. Mm -hmm. I gotta teach JD how to change a tire on that truck before I give it to him though. Something I will never miss is waking up in the morning and scraping ice off of my car. Or digging it out of snow before having to drive anywhere. I do not miss that one bit. I love the subreddit Idiots in Cars. I fucking love that subreddit. Oh. Idiots in Cars? I, I didn't follow it. Idiots in Cars. What? I didn't follow it. Why? Because it just pissed me off. There's oh, it'll so make you angry fucking sometimes. fucking Idiots in Cars. Yeah. But one of them recently was somebody didn't clear the ice off the top of their car and they're going on the freeway and it comes off in this massive sheet and just oh, like flipping through the air smashes the windshield of the car mm -hmm. behind them. It's like a, it's in a dash cam too, so you see this thing coming and it just smashes the shit up. So another fucking video today. This thing is crazy. It was a bunch of cars were on lined up on the side of the street, like they had oh, all been pulled yeah. over. You saw the spike strip, yeah, yeah. strip thing? The cops put on a spike strip because it was a high speed chase. But they didn't get any of the other cars off the road. They just had them all pull over to the side, hits a spike strip, and it does like this big like 180 spin and slams right into the guy who's filming. It's fucking crazy. It's horrifying. And I, it's like, how could you not see this coming? How I, could nobody see this coming? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw, I posted this on Instagram the other day, but there was someone driving around Austin, and I've seen this before, but the rims on the... Swangers. They were like, they're That's so, so pointy you posted and that? sharp. I saw them like 20 minutes before you posted that. Have yeah? y'all never yeah. seen those before? I see that guy. No, I saw that once, guy. Oh, that guy? Yeah, yeah, same car. I see that guy once a week. What? Why? Yeah, it's like, it's, it's like he's thing. in combat. Like but in, it's like, what was it, it Greece where the blades came like out? two like fucking Rome feet onto your car, so how do you park anywhere? It's, I don't understand those either. There's a lot of shitty people. not illegal? That's a big culture in Houston too. Yeah, I think that's where it originated. I think I it's funny. Get it. Yeah. I don't get it. There was I like it. <laughs> we had a really rainy get this on my night. Car. <laughs> we had a really rainy night in Austin recently, and I w was going to this concert thing. I guess it wasn't a concert. They were playing Akira with live synth music. It was fucking <laughs> badass concert. Um, it was, it was a movie. Uh, so I'm going there, and it's like super rainy and stuff like that. And I'm at this light, and I hear this like thump in the back of my car. And I was like, "Well, fuck! I just got hit." So like, I look back there, and then I like wave at the person. God damn it. So like I see that like right past this light that we're at is a parking lot and I was like and I signaled to go into there So I pull in and this guy instead of doing it without using his turn signal just whipped out through that down that road and He wasn't gonna like stop to like to, to no. do a hit and run and I'm in my Jeep and like there's nothing between me and the road and the parking lot except for like a curb and stuff like that. So I like looked to make sure I was safe and I just like fucking mounted the curb and went over on the road. Hell. And I started like falling. I was like, maybe he's going somewhere else. And then this guy thought I was like chasing him. Sure. Well, you were. Yeah. I mean, but I thought <laughs> well, he was going to park, park, like go somewhere else. Let's so take then, a picture yeah. of his license plate. So then he, well, it was like raining cats and dogs and I couldn't see because he'd fucking hit me. So I, there's no space to see. So then he like, Whips ass into a park like a neighborhood street without doing signal and he's going like fucking 45 and At that point. I'm just like it is not worth yeah. this guy killing yeah. someone. So I just like Are you very distantly? I was like if I run into him again if I see him again then great But I stopped was like there damage on your car. Uh, so I checked it that guy probably fucked his car up pretty good But he hit my tire, so there's nothing oh, on my nice. Yeah, good Jeez. And he took else? off for no reason. Yeah, someone but I and I was gonna let him go like I, I swear I would have seen it and be like you okay? 
hey, that sucks. Be careful when you drive in the rain. That would have been the extent of it. But this guy could have like killed somebody in the progress. Yeah, not worth it. Well, I saw. Is uh, your dream car still your dream car? Yeah, I just put it in chat. Did you really? Yeah. What is your dream car? 59 El Camino. 59 El Camino. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. I yes. 59 yeah. El Camino is fucking like awesome. an SS though. Like if you could own any car, would, would, like that would be the El Camino was Jeff's. Uh, it was the Bronco. Cl classic Bronco. That's if Jeff could own any car, he'd own a, own a Bronco. I'm not a car guy. It's it weird that I get so associated mm -hmm. with a car. My car. I not. I never had like a dream you're car a, growing you're up. You're a technology guy. Yeah, I'm a technology yeah. person. I like I like gadgets and stuff, and that's like yeah. the ultimate gadget. So. I uh, I never I, I don't know anything about cars. I hardly know any make and models of cars and like what my dream car would be. But growing up, I always wanted a convertible. No, really? Yeah, like I a, thought that would be super fun, but it, not very uh, smart to have in Canada. No, no, <laughs> you use tough. it one month out of the year. Yeah, it's one of those things too. It's like it's a lot better on paper than when you have it in practice because yeah. you just don't do it as often. Yeah. Like he doesn't even take the top off his Jeep. He said. Yeah. What about you? Which dream car? It's always been a Wrangler. Yeah, you know? yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, like maybe not the specific one that I have, but the thing is, is I'd rather have a classic version of the vehicle that will just main, re remain the same, timeless piece, versus like what you guys are going through, where it's like, oh, I just got this nice Jeep, and there's a new one that's out, and it's way better, and now I feel bad about owning this yeah. one. Yeah. So like, I think I'm always just gonna own like a classic Jeep. You just gotta deal with the issues because I used to own a, a '64 Chevy pickup, mm -hmm. and that thing. Oh my god, man, that, that thing was a, a monster to keep going. It, it got, busted. It got eight miles to the gallon. Woof. My dad had a a Camry when we were growing up, and it had this really cool feature where in the trunk seats would fold up, mm. and they would become like full seats that you could sit in, but facing out the trunk window. Mm -hmm. No. So me and my brothers used to sit in those seats all the time, and like we would just like wave at people in the we red stopped. lights and stuff. And I realized growing up, like. A really bad prank I could have pulled is like to bring a sign with me that said "Help me" oh. and like hold it up. In oh the my back god! Of the car. You didn't do that though, did you? No, I, I never did that. I would never do that to my parents. But um, a really Just shitty you didn't kid think would. Think about it at the time. Yeah, maybe. If I was smarter with it. The uh, did you see the new Jeep Renegade? Is that the one that looks like the pickup truck? It looks fucking weird. It looks like uh, it's like a mix of a Hummer and a Jeep. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're not a fan. It sounds like it's fine. They had codenamed it something else, and apparently they were not going to do yeah, Wranglers. That's it, Bart. Oh, is that? That's what that's that what I saw a, on Facebook. That's a brand weird new 2019 car. Jeep Renegade. I'm not sure. That, that looks like a concept car to me, though. It yeah, like that, I think there's that's a concept. They did release something about like they have like a new pickup truck. It's not the first time they did that, but yeah, I don't think I'll get it. You guys can look this up if you want to. This is actually a fight a dream car. There'll be no way to get it because it's a it's a prototype. Uh huh. And you'll, you'll get it for obvious reasons. It's Peugeot makes it. It's called the Hogger. Oh yeah. The H O G G A R. Is it one of those shitty three wheel vehicles? Nope. It's not. Although it does kind of look like it, <laughs> but it it's got like four wheels. One of those mean-looking things. Dude, you just got to see it. It's crazy. It looks like it was. I think the, that that concept came out in like 2003. It looks like somebody tried to make the warthog. That's pretty fucking cool. Yeah. That looks like it's a like a. Yeah, that's it right there. Look how yep. fucking badass that car is, dude. And they just made it, and then they just never produced it. Just Peugeot. Is that what it's called? The yeah. lion thing. Yeah, but I see them in Australia, but I've never seen them in America. Probably because in Australia they probably pronounce it the way they do in the UK, which is they pronounce it Peugeot. Ah, uh, that's how Gavin says it. Peugeot. Don't take Gavin's. That's true. Pronunciation. That's is. true. But I feel like I've never seen that lion thing. But maybe. It's weird going to different countries and seeing the different kinds of. It's things. weird. Can you bring that lion back up again. You know what I always associate that lion with? Is low and brow beer. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I don't know why I see so, that and I immediately think of low and brow. So that was the concept. They apparently did make a hogger coupe utility vehicle. It looks like a Ute from uh, Australia. Uh -huh. But they uh, sold it in Brazil and other South the American name? countries. Yeah, it doesn't. It that doesn't thing's look, fucking dope. Doesn't look nearly as cool. It's no. Funny. Oh, it's gross. Yeah. As we're talking about this, literally, Jack tweeted 20 minutes ago. It's a picture of his Tesla that says, "I love this car so much. I've had it for over half a year, put nearly 9,000 miles, and I still grin every time I sit in it." Yeah. Like, as we're talking about Tesla, it's listen. It's a. It's. I gotta say, it's a. I'm an evangelist for it because it's a really good product. I get in mind every time. I'm happy with it. It's great. You know, I think I might go. Barb, you want to go get one tonight? Let's go get one. You, you get one, yeah, I get one. Why don't you uh, put the um, down payment on it? Okay. And I'll pay you back. Guys, we're going to go get a Tesla. Yeah, we're going to timeshare Tesla. What Do time it. is it? 6 35? It's about time to go get a Tesla, I think, folks. Yeah, change that to maybe possibly a Tesla owner next time you see us. Well, we got to wrap up then. You know, so you we got, yeah, we got to go get to the dealership. Yeah, you yeah. can't. You're buy fucking, one. You can't buy one in Texas. What? Oh, you're gonna right. buy, you can buy it right now. <laughs> buy it online. You have yeah. to buy it online. You can, use you can use the Touch ID. Use Apple Pay. You have to. All right. <laughs> <laughs> God, thanks for watching, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Ah, humbug. Holidays are the worst. But Papa needs a new speedboat.
So make sure you click that link and visit the Rooster Teeth store now.